King, welcome to the penultimate time in town. We made it. Welcome to all of our travelers from all over the world and all over the country who are coming. Harmon Town is now in session. Rob Schraub. Spencer Crittenden. And the inevitable, Dan Harmon. Ooh, yeah. Thank you all the time. over a stool twice. Damn. I remember the time when you didn't knock over a stool twice. <laughs> yeah, okay. Good. Oh, <laughs> Knock <laughs> it off. All right. No, Welcome to Harmon Town, everybody. Thanks. <laughs> Jeff Davis, Rob Trump, Spencer. Uh, I don't have. I, I... This is the second to last Harmon Town. Yeah. I feel like I had a. Oh. I must have had a dream that I wrote something. Did you ever? I'll be right back. Did you ever have a podcast and this happened to you? <laughs> what? <laughs> what? That guy's gonna take a shit. <laughs> That guy that, is going to take a shit. That body language is only, it's like, I, I have to take a shit. When giant somebody sp- goes, oh no, I'll be right back, <laughs> runs that yeah. way, yeah, that's, going to take a shit. Yeah, that's the Del the Taco alley. trots right there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I want to know all about it when he gets back. <laughs> oh, shit. Oh, boo. Oh, the, oh he was, he, he, we don't have Steve Levy tonight, right. so he's oh. on Vodka Patrol. He, right. he didn't have to take a shit. That would have yeah. never came out otherwise. What? Your shit? No one would, yeah. <laughs> I have to fetch vodka every time I take a shit. Oh. Yeah, I don't have any notes. I, I swear, though, I think it just is because we're, 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 we're in the last leg of the podcast. I think it's important to note, I must have had a dream that I wrote down a note. Classic. Because I remember today, I was like, well, I got that one note that I wrote, right? <laughs> And that was like, in the dream, I was like, i got to talk about this on the podcast. In my dream, I thumbed a note into my notes app. And I was like, going to talk about that. And I, it was in a dream. I've had- the, the reality is, this show is not worth coming to. <laughs> I, 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 that's the reality. But I, in my dreams, it was. I dream about it. It's affecting me. I wrote a note that uh, I was eating a giant marshmallow. All right, well, that's <laughs> Jeff. I always have dreams where it's like the dream is just me standing in my room and I pull out my wallet and I place $5 into my wallet and I put it back in my pocket and then I'm like, that wasn't a dream. I must have $5 and nope. <laughs> That's like, what, that was the podcast equivalent. That's what you did. What are the ratio of dreams you have that are like, because uh, we, we, we have dreams where you wake up from the dream and you're for a second you're like, that's real. And then right. you're like, oh, that's not real. What do you think the ratio is when that's good and 5%. Bad? 
Oh. Because sometimes it's good, sometimes Damn. it's bad, right? Like sometimes you that's find not a ratio, fifty dollars, and then you're like, "I found fifty dollars while you're working." You're like, "I didn't find no fifty dollars." <laughs> I'd and say it's like, almost always bad. I I I I feel like in the last couple of years, every time that's happened to me, it's been exclusively good. Mm-hmm. Like, and maybe that's a privilege thing, like because I excelled to a point where I'm like, my dreams are now just about like. My car's got a flat tire. And then I wake up. I'm like, no, it doesn't. I had a dream where I was throwing up metal spaghetti. I had another dream where all my teeth were falling out. One tooth fell out. Then the other tooth fell out. That means you're getting sick. Yeah, I know. And I was. And the whole whole bottom row of my teeth just cracked off in one piece like a Dracula dentures. And then I was like, this is the worst thing that's ever happened to me. And then I was like telling people about it. And I was like, wait a second. I could talk perfectly. This is a dream. Oh, great. This is a dream. My teeth are fine. And then I woke up. But how many dreams have you, can you remember a dream where you, it was a great thing that was happening. And then you woke up and you're like, I can't wait to get out of bed because that thing happened. No, it didn't. Yeah. One time I dreamed that I bought Pokemon Blue. Pokemon I, Blue. I had a dream that Kyle McLaughlin was a good friend of mine. <laughs> <laughs> and like, and I was like, because I met him at like this party and I was like, oh man, I can't wait. And I'm really getting along. He's like <laughs> listening to me and uh, laughing at all my jokes. And I'm like, I can't wait to go home and tell Kate, hey, yeah. I'm, Someone listen to me. I'm fr- <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> It was a dream. Yeah. And then I woke up and then I was like, I don't know no Kyle McLaughlin. <laughs> I got all bummed out. When, yeah, when, I, when, like when, I, when I was a little like kid, I, I had a dream that I could fly, and it was r- running around in my like driveway, and there was like a, we we had a basketball hoop, and I had a dream that if I just wanted to, I could fly, like in like not like like Superman like way into the sky, but I could just kind of hover around and just fly like twenty feet off the ground. It was this awesome, liberating dream, and I woke up. Went out into the driveway and jumped in the air and believed I could fly. Aww. And I guess what? Couldn't fly. Damn. Yeah. I could fly in my dreams, but I have to flap my arms really hard. <laughs> Did you ever dream that you could do that and then your arm extended? Like uh like Plastic Man? No, like uh Space Jam. Because <laughs> I mean, it obviously brought me to R. Kelly when you said that. I believe I can fly. You okay. literally believed you could fly. I, I believed. I, I dreamt I could basketball. fly, and I was I was young and naive enough to think that oh, all you have to do is will yourself to fly. I mean, that's amazing that you were young enough that you retained that dream belief enough that you got out of bed and ran oh, oh, out th- there. The moment I woke up, I went right out to where the dream took place in the, in the driveway, and I just I thought like. Just jump and believe in yourself. Like, believe you can do it. And I jumped up and went smack on the, on the gravel. I and and I thought, okay, that was a dream. That This is a harsh awakening about the sadness of humanity. All life is sorrow. I think the nice thing about our species, I think the key to our victory, and inevitably to our demise, obviously we're all dying because of our success. <laughs> yes. it's, a, it's a double-edged sword. <laughs> It's a, like, 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 like humanity. You did it. You're the most populous mammal on the planet. Therefore, game over. You're dead. Um, or you're going to become Matrix people. In, in either case, win win for I, I think, insects. I think jellyfish and lobsters fucking won the battle. On, uh, but I think the romantic thing about our species is, as pointed out in Yanov, Smirnov, whatever that guy's name is, the, the is. Uh, no, no, that's like, like no, whatever the Yanov Shmirov, the, the guy, the guy, the Yankov guy I'm always Shmirnoff. quoting his anthropology book that I, the Homo Deus uh, guy. Uh, it, it's like our dreams, at Homo sapiens, our dreams are louder than reality. Like we can convince ourselves of shit, and we just th- we're just like fucking yeah. I should major in journalism. That's a fucking yeah. I've never looked it up. I'm gonna be a journalism major. I believe in journalism. And then you can go to college for a semester and be like, journalism isn't real. And then like, you drop out. And you're like, what am I going to do? And then people would be like, why would you do that? Why wouldn't you look up journalism? Well, because I thought I believed in it. I wonder how many, how many journalist lobsters there are. <sighs> All right. Well, let's bring up our... <laughs> Wait. Can we let's... quickly, just really quick, in the news, you, you hear about the Cybertruck? Do you have any thoughts on Cybertruck? I, yeah, I, I what's, lo- your, what's your temperature on Cybertruck? I love it. 
you guys are going to talk shit about my best friend Elon Musk. No, I'm, I'm just wondering. I love, I love it. I love the Cybertruck. The only thing I don't love Cyber about the Cybertruck. Cybertruck. Coming to your town, it's Cybertruck. The Drive it you around, it's got cyber truck, straight cyber lines cyber instead cyber of curvature. Cyber it's a Cybertruck, cyber it's a deal maker for sure. <laughs> um, I got one problem with the Cybertruck. One? It's for poor people. It's it's like a, clearly like the the clean lines and the thing. It's like, yeah, oh, it's, it's not a, for poor people. No, it's for poor it's people. It's meant to protect rich people from the apocalypse. But not from throwing a brick out the window. No, it's meant to. No, it's got a really sensible price point. No, I know, but it's 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 meant for when the world ends and you have to like go between your billionaire compounds so you could like just drive over people with spears or whatever. Aesthetically, that's what it that's what it presents. But uh, the in in reality, what it is is a he's eliminated the the big poor because he caught so much shit for like I'm gonna make my own car and it's like. Part of why it's hard to make a car is because engineers will tell you, yeah, you know what? You make humans feel safer by adding like these weird Roman arches to the architecture, which don't add to the safety of the car. But if you just make those straight lines, he can make those cars even faster. They're cheaper. That that truck's going to be cheap. That's sure. what I read. That's yeah. what I read in Wired magazine. It is. It's not super expensive. Yeah. Speaking of Wired magazine, we're gonna let's bring Woo! out our guests. Uh, I, I I brought these guys down from San Francisco because we're we're in the final leg of our podcast. There's no rhyme or reason to it except that I love them and then the history of the show, like. Of the of the amazing decade that we've spent together, I one of the highlights was my ability to reach across the world and like, having read a book and say like, "Hey, come down and to make a new friend." Um, and uh, I I, ju I just wanted these guys to be here for the uh, for the end times uh, and, and and chat with us. And uh, 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 is that a good introduction, Dan? Yeah. I don't know. Uh, Let's bring out. Please welcome New York Times bestselling author Cybertruck. What? <laughs> Steve Silverman and yeah. Keith yeah. Carriker. Yeah. I had a dream that I was on the second to last Harmon Town. That's that amazing. Was no dream. So heavy. <laughs> that dream is now a reality. Uh, thank you for writing Neuro Tribes, which everyone should go read. Um, uh, uh, we were talking in the green room about diagnosis. We self diagnosis were. diagnosis of others uh we were getting into me you were like has your mind changed about anything whereas like i w i had to clarify just so everyone knows i never diagnosed myself with autism ever right right and wh what i was talking about uh was with some autistic people online and uh they were claiming that you had diagnosed yourself with autism and i said well i don't you know i don't know about that i don't think so but Whatever Dan is, he's certainly neurodivergent. He's fucking weird, right? <laughs> I mean, come on. In the best way. Neuro he's a weird guy. He's a, he's a weird that, was weird. that was the important and thing about your book. It's true. He's a fucking the... weird guy. The, yeah, but the it's, whole, the, it's the whole thing... It's strange, right? It, it, yeah, but the whole thing is that it's the fucking weird people that keep society moving forward and not getting yeah. us stuck in boring shit. Okay, constantly. fine. <laughs> Uh, that's You're why every too, now, 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 that's now Steve, like uh, yeah. you, you probably you don't uh, you don't think you're qualified or anybody's really qualified to diagnose other no, no, people. No, no, no. no, no but no. looking back through history, we could probably diagnose certain people probably with certain Maybe. certain yes. certain qualities. Yeah. Well, the people who were retro diagnosed, as they say in my book, the historical figures, they were diagnosed by people with actual qualifications to do so. Right. Yeah, yeah. But, but so you, I would never. But looking at Dan, <laughs> just, just look just, at him. Just, yeah. just, yeah. just, to, just to pick somebody um, at random. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, no, just to no, pick my, what my, the my, what is wrong with him? I mean, like, <laughs> can you help us? Uh, well, we were talking about ADD before, um, which seems right to me. But you know, I'm certainly not qualified to diagnose anybody. But one gets a feeling, you know. I and, resonated a lot with the ADHD books that I've read yep. slash listened to because who wants to fucking read these pieces of shit? Right. I got better things to do. God damn it! Right, right. Uh, but, ADHD. Uh, yeah. But but the beauty is, if you have ADHD or whatever the fuck you have or don't have, uh, like like what are the odds that science has come up with ways to compartmentalize all of us? The important right. thing about your book is that key phrase, neurodiversity. It yep. is the idea of like, hey, it takes a million kinds of brain yep. to make a great 
society right. and, and that America, not to get jingoistic, but right. it's like, cause it's probably only through, through our, like we, we just didn't know how to stomp it out. But like, w- like we created a country where if you can build it and it's worth money, like you're, you are, you now go from being maybe the village idiot or the village geek or the village pervert to being like the village count, the village, like, you know, and the, the, if you read neuro tribes, it's like, there's a part of it that is like the history of America as it's, it's undiagnosable relationship with autism and how always the people on the fringe have been creating new ways for us normies to communicate with each other. And us normies have messed up the world so badly (laughs) that it might take somebody like Greta Thunberg, whose autism gives her the ability to not give a fuck about the lying whoever's that is know? the that that yeah. that's the that's the cycle is is someone who's like geeky and like draws fire stepping out front and going like look I don't I don't I don't know how you people are approaching this but in my mind here's how I approach it and then it, you, you, yeah, we put them out there, we burn them at the stake, and then over the charcoals, we roast our marshmallows, and then we start partying. <laughs> right, right, right. Uh, anyways, Keith, uh, thank you uh, for coming out, too. Thanks for having me. <laughs> I, I literally, since the invite, have been just contemplating the entire audience going, Huh? <laughs> <laughs> Who Keith, is that guy? Keith is, is Steve's famous? husband as of 2003. <laughs> and, uh, like, uh, yeah. like, <laughs> That's our neurodivergence. Yes, exactly. <laughs> also, uh, you, uh, you own what, 60, 80, how many bow ties, Keith? Six, uh, 60-ish, yeah. 60-ish. <laughs> yeah. He's one of the few people that actually knows how to tie a bow tie, and I find that... Awesome. <laughs> well, He's also a chemistry teacher, so yeah. it's sort of a middle regard. a middle school chemistry. <laughs> no, teacher. I, I moved up to high school. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. I did middle school for ten years, but thank you. Is that how it works? Our mid, our <laughs> high school chemistry teachers like they're you're like I finally know more about chemistry now. <laughs> I've I've watched middle schoolers deal with. Oh, that's what potassium is. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's it's more the uh, crowd control. <laughs> the middle school crowd control was definitely boot camp, and then. High school, you can handle it. And so they're mo- they, like, yeah, that, well, God, that's a profound statement. You, 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 I assume public school? No, no. Oh, okay. No, it's no. Uh, quite, oh, heavens no. God, quite no. not. No. Yeah, uh, quite But not. it really is based on that idea that kids are animals. I mean, yeah. like, like, and the, as they grow into adolescence, they increasingly become capable of putting your head through a chalkboard. <laughs> Indeed. Well, well, thanks for that thought. So, <laughs> Do sure. they still have chalkboards? Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. But do, do, do you have a preference uh, on chalkboard versus dry erase? Wiper so, chalk. Oh, my God. So Wiper actually, chalk. Uh, Wiper chalk. <laughs> so I had... Wiper I, chalk. I use chalkboards mostly. I've recently had to start using whiteboard. I hate it. Right. Yeah. I, I there's something, definitely I, prefer yeah. chalkboard. It it's, freaks me out, too. Does yeah. the smell uh, get you high? No, it's just uh, the, those markers last about a week. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. And yeah. It's just, they're expensive, uh, but chalk, chalk is durable. You can yeah. see from a Tactile. stick of chalk how much chalk is left. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yes. And you could exactly. go to war with China that's and profound. lose, and like if there's a little chalk left, you could be like, I know that's going to make a lot. <laughs> yes. And like you could come Absolutely. into Rick and Morty a week later and be like, all right, anyways, this story is really important. God fucking cock it! <laughs> I, it just you, like, like, you can God also <laughs> fucking cock it. And you... <laughs> You That's can do the- that without going to war with China, too. <laughs> yeah. What, where, what's your fucking beef with China, yeah. Dan? You can go to war oh, with China I'm sorry. and I didn't then know. go... Lay it on the line, Dan. All right. Why China? Hey, look, this is part of the reason I'm ending the podcast, because <laughs> you can there's going to come a time when you're either pro-China or anti-China, and I'm not, I'm not in it for that, man. Look. Free Hong Kong! Yay. So, Keith... Keith yeah. Keith, Keith, you're saying you're you're a dyed in the wool chalkboard, old yes. school slate and chalk oh, yeah. dude. Yeah, I yeah, like that. Absolutely. I, but he's but he still gets to blow shit up, which is the fun part. You, you get to bl- yeah, okay. You get well, to that's blow shit up, the well, colors guy. Yeah, that's just true. you know, make stuff. Change. Now, so, uh, is there? Uh, do you have any observations? Like, you've been how long have you been teaching? Uh, twenty years now. So you've got you're in a prime position to make any observations. I know teachers always like. Like, like, give us any generational observations. Uh, well, so one thing 
Uh, wow, this is, I I'm I really I'm really not that deep. Um, one thing I will tell you that a lot of people don't know, unless you work in a school, is that teachers emotionally devolve to the level of the students that they teach. Mm. So, like elementary school teachers, how they get upset. <laughs> Is different from middle school Even teachers. Even including in the teacher's lounge from... when they're like, who took my Nilla wafers? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> they like, yeah. yeah. So basically, I just am perpetually 15 now. <laughs> and just sullen and withdrawn. It, Whereas it, you used to be perpetually 12, so now Yeah, you're... exactly. So I'm moving up in the world. Yeah. <laughs> but Keith, Keith are, are you being honest? Like, are you, like you, That's actually a, a, just a thing that you do to adapt and, and to be able to deal with them. Yeah, you just spend your whole day with people the same age. Yeah. I couldn't imagine hanging out with a bunch of 15-year-old me's. Like, I, I was a, just a prick. Um, I mean, I, I haven't changed all that much, but no. I, I, I was just... So, yeah, on the record, my students are great. Yeah, but... And, you, if, uh, and you, if any you, of them you, are listening to this, don't. There's gotta be one that don't. you hate. <laughs> oh. <laughs> like, what? You gotta hate one of them. <laughs> Tad, no, you know, not at Tammy all. In the he can't pack. talk about that. I don't have a favorite class section. No, I try, they're I, all my favorites. Do you, do you have Do you have a way of handling? Do you have a way of handling the class clown or the guy that heckles you or the girl that like like, like whatever? Some student is the like the most disruptive. That's uh, that's actually me. I'm the class clown in my class. Isn't classroom. it there true you that you're yeah. supposed to, on the first day of class find the biggest student and beat him up? <laughs> That's that's what I've heard. Just fucking Thank sharpen up a toothbrush, to sharpen the edge of a toothbrush, and just shank them. <laughs> Otherwise, you get a full two semesters. <laughs> You're on the menu. I, I I think my favorite teacher in high school was my uh, was my chemistry teacher. I, I thought she was the one that like I connected with the most because I, I thought chemistry is it's so weird. That, like like the idea Absolutely. of like. The, the idea that like, like protons and electrons and what, like fucking chemicals are reacting with each other, it's so. It's complicated. It's so. You summed it up so well there. That's, no, no, that's, like, 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 that's, that's it, my it, whole year class it, oh, no. in a it, sentence it, it, fragment. It, it just all sounds like magic. And then yeah. th th you have a person trying to explain magic to you the whole time. It's pretty fascinating. Yeah. No, it's, it's a lot of fun. I'm a biology guy myself, but Ugh. sorry. You then, don't like it. You, then you we consider can't that. Be friends. Yeah, <laughs> you're like biology is just like a weird theater play built on the set that I am responsible for. No, okay. Here's a real question for you. Okay. I want to know about as for, as a teacher. Now you've done middle school. Now you've done high school. Like I do want to know when you're standing in front of a class, like and try to be honest about it. And I do trust you. We've had dinner together, and like you're, I I, I I'm like, like I always wonder about high school teachers. Like what? How much of your brain is occupied by that idea of you're a performer and like I'm killing, I'm dying, I'm losing them. Oh yeah. I'm getting them back. Yeah. A like, lot. Like a lot. Yeah. And how much does that drive what you're uh doing? Because as I would think if I were a teacher, that's why I'm not a teacher, because I would be like, okay guys, two plus two equals and I hear a yawn, I'm like, equals party. <laughs> <laughs> and that's not true. It doesn't equal that. No. <laughs> But I would teach them that because I'd be like, don't kill me. Uh, yeah, no, it's, well, I, so when I was a kid, I loved doing theater. So I do feel, and then, but then I also fell in love with science and studied science. So I do feel like it's sort of a bit of acting and a bit of So you have that science. awareness that you're like, you know, who am I presenting as? Like, like I need yeah. to be a character that they can trust. Yeah. And well, I, I'm, I, I feel like, when I think about it, I feel like I'm definitely myself in front of my classroom. I'm really open to my kids. Um, I try to be really honest about a lot of stuff, um, but I do feel like I sort of put on a character when I get to school every morning. A Accent? little bit. I'm a lot more out. <laughs> I'm a lot more outgoing and humorous there than you're going to find out that I am tonight. <laughs> I feel like the the bow tie is part of that, but yeah, not definitely, to, absolutely. Like 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 I because I'm thinking I'm running a simulation of my high school self and like imagining myself being in your class, and my first thought 
like just looking at you before without knowing you at all, I would be like, don't fuck with this guy. Oh God, no, no. My, I don't think I've ever taught a student who thought that about me. Well, I get, but but I, I, I think I, it's more I, like I don't mean, mean don't fuck with him because he could kick my ass. I mean, don't get on this guy's bad side because he's actually like he's hardcore OG nerd, and like he is going to pay huge dividends if you're like if you give him a minimal amount of attention, and he's go, and, and and he will leave you behind with the smart kids if you. If you fuck around, I, like, that, 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 that's that's a version of of hierarchy that I would recognize. Keith, Keith gets really nice letters years later, even from students who thought his class was too hard or whatever. Like uh, yeah. it, it, it makes you cry sometimes actually well, to get really I, nice. I letters. cry about a lot of things. That's true. <laughs> but um, I think in <laughs> an American modern society about the bow tie, Tucker Carl- Carlson notwithstanding, uh, yeah, that the bow tie is sort of like, hey, you know what? Like, uh, formal, but only in a in a in the sense that I had to be. Keith, can right. you? I don't know. It's, 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 I can't put my finger on it. Keith, it's, can, yeah. can you can you tie? Because you, you you say you wear them all the time, right? Yeah, I wear one every can day. You, do you do it without looking, or do you have to, do you have do you have, to I, have a mirror? I can't do it with looking. I have terrible uh, <laughs> spatial reasoning. Left and right gets mixed up. So if I try to look in a mirror and do it, so you do it without I without looking. Strangle myself. <laughs> would it be would it be a bullshit thing for me to ask to, for you to untie your bow tie and oh retie God. it yeah. without? Yeah. Because, so, because, whoa! Because I I, right. I have to have a mirror to tie a, a bow tie. A lot of people have never seen a bow tie be tied, including I'm speaking for myself. <laughs> I should use my I statements. I have never seen a bow tie be tied. All right, well, I'm so glad I could be here to do this thing. Um, I will say a couple of great things about bow ties over neckties. Can't, can't spill on it. Oh, okay. Okay. No, all right, never mind. No, please. No. All right. Get him it. Well, this is. This is. I'm, I'm so not going to be able to do this. I've only. Okay. I'm like. I'm like, I'm seriously shaking. Oh, yeah, that's right. It's, oh, oh, well, that made it worse. <laughs> <laughs> this is, these people came from all over the world to watch you tie your bow tie. Tie, 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 tie. I would say, I would say, mic drop. That that is so hard to do. I would say, if you were ever dying in class, (laughs) just untie your tie and then do that, and then and then tell them all to sit down. I I think Keith, that was the most show busy thing that's ever happened on our show. Awesome. (laughs) <laughs> and that's why I married him, too, because can you imagine that dexterity put to other uses? Uh-oh. <laughs> Uh-oh. 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 I, I, I'm not sure exactly what you mean, but that sounds What's sexy. That hand? <laughs> the, Eng- the English major's uh, interpretation of the... Uh, I'll get it later. I did <laughs> I hope you guys don't mind sharing the stage with maybe some uh, some pilgrims tonight because the show is ending and so the audience is like like packed with uh, people who have come uh, like they've flung themselves from all four corners of the earth and uh, how many people came from another country uh, tonight? Yeah, that's crazy. too wow. many people. How many people came from like a long way away in the U.S. or Canada? Yeah, yeah. wow, that's a bit more believable. How many people wore red tonight? <laughs> <laughs> How many people can tie a bow tie without looking? Oh, <laughs> see, they're lying. But the first person that comes to mind that I met at the drawing room, which I I, I, I got in my car from the Rick and Morty office, and I literally hit the wrong button on my Tesla screen, and I went ended up going to what was my old home. 
um, which is a couple blocks from the drawing room. And I, so I w went into the drawing room for the first time in like six months, and it was just filled with, I'm going to call it neurodiversity, um, <laughs> uh, and, 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 and proudly so, and like really, like, like, like really passionate people, like people just thanking me for doing the podcast, like being so respectful and amazing. And one of the most inspiring things, by, by the way, not to get off on a tangent, but was actually the drawing room regulars, the people that, I, my social anxiety was like, fuck, these people must hate me for fucking like being a magnet for outside interlopers and all these things. But like, some of them were like, like working class elements of them were because they talked to you guys, um, like, like they were at the end, they're going like, Hey man, like, uh, I talked to those people and like, uh, you know, the shit they say about you fucking cheers, man. <laughs> I was like, that's you guys. Like you're nice. Like, 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 like you sold me to these guys who fuck them. Um, <laughs> they're not here. But anyways, but like thank you and like I every every single Harmontown fan as a as a matter of tradition, their introduction is always I'm so sorry, I don't mean to interrupt you. I hate that you I'm doing this to you, but my name is so and so. They 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 come in so low, um, you almost want to punch them, but you <laughs> You don't, because you understand that is exactly what I would do. That's exactly how I would feel. And so many of you came up to me tonight. One of you in particular came up to me, like, in the middle of my conversation with someone else and just said, like, I'd like to talk to you about autism. <laughs> that was your introduction. And I said to that person, do you know who the guest is tonight? No. It's Steve Silberman. And they were like, oh, my God. Um, is that Well, well the, the, let me tell you this. Being Steve Silverman, I have a lot of autistic friends, <laughs> and Whoa. they thank you so much, uh, particularly for Abed, yeah. Um, yeah. Oh, because oh, yeah. it, it gave them a person who they could really relate to in visible media. I um, wrote a character based on my friend, almost punching down-ish, like I was like, hey, my funny friend. Right. And then I would, would, because I was narcissistic and hadn't been abused enough by online, uh, <laughs> I was like constantly Googling myself and my show. Uh, uh, and what I saw was this new thing called the autistic community saying, we love this Abed character. And I, because of greed and selfishness and desire to do a good job by these people, I was like, what do they mean? Like, right. why do they like him? And they would say, he doesn't have Pinocchio syndrome. They would, right. say, they would say all these things. And it was like, oh, my God. Like, what is this What's thing? Pinocchio syndrome? Well, it's just this idea that if you're the data character on Star Trek, if you're the, like, like, like these characters. I want to be a real boy. The, yeah. Oh, yeah. God. It would be, if only I could give someone a hug, right. then I'd be right. the greatest person right. ever. <laughs> right. And it's like, like, it's that, I don't mean to. Uh, 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 Put down hugs? <laughs> well, I don't, I, 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 I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't mean if that if the, if that is someone's journey, I don't mean to like yeah. uh, 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 diminish that. But oh, yeah. thank but, you. But but <laughs> there is a very very large community of people that are like, actually, this doesn't feel that much like a disability. I'm constantly watching you people uh, give each other hugs and then run away crying from each other. I, like, it kind of all comes out in the wash. I basically am, uh, like, like behind this piece of plexiglass, which sometimes is an inconvenience, but overall seems to avoid a lot of trouble. I seem to be much more efficacious at my job. Like, I, I don't understand why you people feel sorry for me and want to cure me of this plexiglass. That seems a little stupid. And so they get a little annoyed. They, they see a character in a show that's like, kind of resonating with them because they're like, I'm a robot, or I'm a puppet, or I'm a wooden clock, or I'm a fucking flying carpet. I'm looking at the carpet. Um, <laughs> there's no such thing as a flying carpet that's like an autism thing. <laughs> you guys saw Aladdin? That carpet's autistic. <laughs> it's like, it'll take you anywhere, but it doesn't care. Ooh. Uh, but they, they, the, I would, I would watch them, and they would go like, "I love Abed because he doesn't have Pinocchio syndrome. He doesn't do this. He doesn't do that." And I was like, "I want these people on my side. I want to do right by them." Mm -hmm. And then I took tests online because I wanted to learn the details of 
like I wanted to send them signals. I'm on your side. I want to be like if you were like writing Sons of Anarchy. Like, let me take a test about motorcycles. Like, oh, my handbrake gives me skin burns or whatever. I'm like, whatever. <laughs> Give me fucking money, cha-ching. Like, I was only doing it through greed and narcissism. I was like, let me, I like this community. I, li I want your approval. Well, you know, I went through the same thing while writing Neurotribes. Yeah. You... Because I started writing about autism as a science writer for Wired. But as soon as I did a bunch of research going all the way back through the Holocaust and everything, I realized, I like these people. These people are on a journey towards autonomy. These are the people that created America. Right, exactly. A, and a, so a journey I towards the, autonomy, is that what you said? You said? Yes. It, it, explain that to me. What I mean is, um, autistic adults for most of the 20th century were like living and dying in institutions. So, and everybody was talking about autism behind their backs. So it was like, oh, what causes autism? Believe it or not, most autistic people don't wake up in the morning and say, I wonder what caused my autism. <laughs> you know, they think about how they can have fun or how they can have friends or how they can fall in love or how they can get a job or et cetera. And so I wanted to send them signals in my book that I was on their side too. And so that's why my book sort of took off uh, with the blessing of the autistic community for which I'm very, very grateful. Yeah, and it was super I listened successful to them. in that regard. Yeah, yeah. It, 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 and, and there are, anyways, but uh, uh, sorry, as, like I was describing this person who came up and said, I want to talk about autism, and she literally did not know that you were the guest tonight, and so I can't, I would be remiss, so like, I think that like, uh, we should bring her up. And, and I spoke, yeah, she I, I, I spoke to her, I spoke yeah. to her before you did. I, because I, I was at the drawing room earlier, and, and she said, like, like I, I think it was her first episode where, where you, you were the guest, and, and like, yeah, we have to bring her up. I don't want to put too much pressure on her, but um, I also don't want her to live the rest of her life going, like, oh, I wanted to talk to him about autism, and then the autism guy was on the show, whatever. Uh, so is it is it Jessica, right? Jennifer. Jennifer. Jennifer I, is very close. Carrasquillo. All right. Jennifer Carrasquillo. All right. But really, Jessica, you go by Jessica mostly. Whoa, awesome. <laughs> Thank you, Rob. Nice, uh, nice, like James Bond kind of tuck and roll yeah. on the stage. That was, that was awesome. very good. That was a Tobias Junke. All right, let's let's talk about autism. Okay. No right. pressure. J but Jennifer, first off, uh, you are you are a uh, behavior specialist. What was what, it again? Yeah. Uh, no, you, use your microphone. What you said, use what you mic said yeah. What you said. Well, no, say it like the, like the way that you know how to say it better than I do. I'm a behavior specialist. Yeah. <laughs> Woo. What does that mean? Like, like the, you you work for companies, corporations, and you deal with people. Like like break break it down for me. I specialize in autism. <laughs> I direct all the autism. I'm an autism director. Just use the mic like a normal oh, guy. Who, who are the people who you work with usually? Oh, no. No. Yeah. No. Um, I work primarily with use your microphone. So the I work primarily with children on the autism spectrum um, from the ages of zero to 11, or 11, 21. Um, and it, I mean, it's it, the, 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 the services are pretty broad. I mean, it's, it's education. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't know. <laughs> if, you could make a a if you could make a wish that would make the world better for the people you work with, what would it be? Oh, that's a really good that's question. That's a good question. That's yeah. a fucking phenomenal question. Um, that's why I love him. <laughs> oh my God! You know, it would it would it would really be about like creating um, not really so much like the the contrived environment from yep. from the ages of you know the, the 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 educational ages, but like beyond that, and and figuring out where they fit in, where people fit into society, because I think there's just I don't know there's just like so many um, expectations of us. It's uh, we all kind of have to like fit into this different. Um, God, I don't. Fucking know what I'm talking about. Actually, no, you were going <laughs> to a good place. But you know what I mean? Place. Like, I yeah. mean, there's, 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 like, I, I feel like we're all kind of like channeled into these very like specific um, um, ways that we go, and and um, it's sometimes the people that are have have the ability to 
contribute the most to these different um, areas are just kind of overlooked. And that's sure. the cool thing about um, autism and, and, and services like what we do is, is we make sure that they don't get overlooked and we can make sure that, you know, these people that have like these incredible contributions to make to, to everything are, have, have a voice, so. That's awesome. <laughs> Excellent. That's like a big theme of your book is the idea that uh, is the idea of accepting neurodiversity and therefore the way a society could react. It's like it, it's like basically building like it, it's going, oh, don't we all recognize that all of our brains are like these crazy fireworks? And right. then therefore, wouldn't an ideal society allow for even the most fringe kind of uh, 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 conduits between the weirdest places of thought up into where they can provide people with help. That's true. Yeah. And I, th I think a lot of times stuff like art and comedy and science has been sort of unofficial channels of that information. That's, yes. Into, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and comedy, so that, TV, writing, yeah. I mean, all the arts, yeah. the sciences, depending on how broad yeah. you want to go. It's like, it's, it's, it's weird people going, can you hear me? David right. Lynch, hello. Right, exactly. I mean, <laughs> diagnose him. Right, <laughs> it's right. like, I was uh, like, like David Lynch is. I was like not a fan until somebody said he's autistic, and I'm like, I'm a fan. <laughs> because well, then I look back at every David Lynch film that I was like, come on, or, already. And then I was like, oh, he's banging on a pipe and going like, hello, or, it's or, me, David Lynch. Can you hear me? Or for that matter, David Byrne, whose uh, show <laughs> yeah. American Utopia. I, mean, you know, I, I just like saw Talking Heads Broadway. finally. Yeah, and uh, you know when I the first time I saw him was in 1977. I'm really old, okay, boomer. Uh, at, <laughs> at, oh damn! At Oberlin, and the first time I saw him, I thought, "Why is that guy so nervous? He's so nervous." Oh, I've never David seen a Bird rock and autistic. roll guy. He's so nervous. <laughs> yeah, he's autistic, which he taught, or he has Asperger syndrome, which he talks yeah. about now. But the amazing thing about American Utopia is totally uplifting, totally beautiful. Everybody playing music while they're dancing on stage. Uh, the antidote to a lot of what's going on in this country right now. Um, <laughs> it, was, it was a very uh, human, humanizing show. And that's coming from somebody with a neurodivergent mind. Yeah. Can I take you to a weird, uncomfortable place? Because I think yes. the last time that we <laughs> talked, maybe I was having dinner with you in San Francisco with Cody. Yeah. Um, but, and I think maybe the election had just happened. And so yeah. we, we were like hippies in San Francisco going like, okay, I guess the world's ending now. Right. But. And it I, did, by the way. It did. <laughs> but like now, like, I, I, I guess I, 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 something that I have perceived as a, a tragedy is that whereas in the past, Neurodiversity built the internet. Neurodiversity like gave us everything that we we're using. Swipe left, swipe right. Like who comes up with that? Like the answer is, and wait, wait, like where are we all? We're all moving in that direction. But like now that the infrastructure has been in place and like all of society is on the internet to the point where your presidents are chosen by the internet, my biggest frustration is my brothers on the spectrum, and I don't mean, I'm not diagnosing myself, I'm saying my people, my, my neurodivergent <laughs> people, by virtue of their Han Solo mentality, they're like, I don't fucking like, think like anybody, like that those folks are now, whereas in the past they were the builders of, of, of what we have, now they are simply sitting online and they were they've they're now i i watch them they, 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 the only way they can express their neurodivergence is by going oh i was uh, butter emails yeah i i like i i, no, I, I feel I'm, like I'm, like like I'm, I'm like they're i'm like dude you're you don't like <laughs> yeah I, I like am i wrong about that or am I, like well i mean there are always a lot of people watching television, you know. But uh, yeah, I mean, I know what you mean. I, I'm if not it, gonna. It, I'm not gonna take part in this system. Like, oh yeah, yeah. That classically, yeah. Your psychology has not taken part in any system. However, right. now the definition of not taking part in a system has now become part of this fucking Death Star. 
Yeah. And I'm like, oh no, oh, I was 25 once. Oh, fuck. And I just like, re- I recede to my swimming pool. I don't know. No, I know. I, when, you know, in the early days of Wired, when we were all in this one huge room with dub music playing and everybody was high and had hickeys on their necks, <laughs> yeah. um, we thought the internet was going to absolutely unleash human creativity. And unfortunately, what it unleashed was Russian propaganda. We so. thought that the internet was like bound. Everybody assumed that almost in a shameful way. Like, I think we were all like, God damn, when's the government going to catch on to the fact that once someone in Saudi Arabia can just sell you jewelry in M- Montana, that everything, racism's going to stop. Like, everything's going to stop. Like, like it's going to pull the plug on everything that's been driving human uh, like jingoism and I was like, we we it was the opposite. It, it was, was the, the opposite. opposite. Was, yeah. Yeah, we were like, true. oh, it was like the internet made us more racist. Wow. Yeah. Well, not us, but yes, people. Uh, it made people, me more racist. Pe- <laughs> uh, no, no, Do no, you I feel more racist? I, no. I, 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 well, it, it's, it's certainly you know what it, it's made me a bigger fucking dick. Yeah, it's me made too, me uh, more absolutely. hateful. Abs- yeah. It's yeah. made too, me absolutely. more divisive. It's made me go. There's there are good people and there are bad people. I never felt that way before. Uh, yeah, I, I agree with you. It's made me a worse Buddhist. <laughs> I, I have regular sort of tire iron fantasies uh, involving certain. Uh, Jennifer, <laughs> can I ask you a question? Uh, we, we spoke earlier. Um, you and like. Over the last like few weeks, when people are kind of coming to the, to Harmontown because it's, it's uh, going to close soon, um, I, I, I meet, we meet a lot of people that talk about like why they listen to our weird, unprepared, stupid show, <laughs> and it means a lot to like uh, it means different things to different people. What, what makes you, as someone you know, that does what you do, like what 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 draws you to it, and what made you come out to go see it? Because a lot of people came from like far and wide. To come tonight, which is really really cool and kind of blows my mind. Like, what what is it for you personally that this did or does or didn't do? <laughs> like, like what, what's your, what's your connection to this? And like, I, I I just don't really have a lot of personal connections overall, so it's boo unacceptable. <laughs> <laughs> I just ruin everything. I'm just gonna leave. What's wrong with you? So it's. It's cool to just yeah, it's cool. It, it's cool to just like kind of get up and be able to say whatever I have to say, and and nobody really connects that to who I am or anything like that. It's just I don't know. This you can just be who you are. It's this existential sort of thing where you can be wherever, and it's great. And you can do that with this whole Harmontown thing because Harmontown doesn't have a location and just is. So it's it's kind of a community and. God, that sounds so dumb. No, it's good. <laughs> but it's cool. Yeah, it's a community, fantastic. and that's what <laughs> that's what I like about it. I I mean, so yeah, that's it. But you, I like you, the you, D and D. You you came from. <laughs> 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 yeah, I like the ND too. That's cool. Oh no, no, I didn't. I was, I was trying that. <laughs> but yeah, you, you came all the way from Pennsylvania. <laughs> I, we, we've met people that came from uh, Vancouver, Jap- Japan, Japan, Texas, There's a England. Japan, Jesus like, 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 I got the Japan. Nick, like, like, can we, can we keep the carousel moving? And like, can we thank Jen and? Cause, thank you, Jennifer. Uh, thank you. I'm not, I'm not good at like dismissing people. <laughs> But it's we got a we got a cavalcade. Thank here. you, Jennifer. That was awesome. I yeah. did have. Yeah. Yay. There were cool. other people. Awesome. Who, can, who, who? Someone actually came from Japan. Right over here. You, Whoa. Uh, that oh, doesn't sound Japanese at all. <laughs> that guy sounds like he's from. It sounds like, like Adam Goldberg. <laughs> well, that's. A, it, it's me, but I'm not the person from Japan. It's Ashlyn, oh, wow. right? Yeah. Ashlyn, you want to come up? Ashlyn, bring it up. Oh, there are. oh wow, oh, a full kimono. I love it. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Excellent. Hello. Yo. Holy Hello. smoke. I mean, for, for our non uh, like video listeners, uh, this, this is a great kimono. It's, it's the full rig. Yeah. Yeah. With uh, a with a rear facing kabuki face. Actually, this is a it's a no mask, no, no, which no. is a, no. no is yeah. like the um, 
predecessor of kabuki theater. It's right. a classical Japanese form of theater. It's almost intertwined, like it's almost like a like a like Shintoism is yeah. the indigenous religion there. It's animistic and it's kind of like a it's almost like a religious ceremony as much as it is a performance. It's really boring. <laughs> Wait, so are you um, visiting from Japan or were you yeah. visiting Japan? No, I live there. Okay. Where do you live? Uh, I live in uh, outside of Osaka. Oh, nice. Yeah, oh, nice. I've been there for 11 years. I went there for a grad school. and uh, Are you, fl- you fluent in Japanese? Hi. <laughs> that means yes. <laughs> so. <laughs> Wait, <laughs> I, uh, I, mean, <laughs> I, I, I knew that one. Nihon go Chioto Henashimasu. Oh, it's nice. It's What? It's nice. Can I ask you a question? Yeah, of course. What's your favorite really weird Japanese food that you can't get here? Um, Mice. Okay, it's called... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Not to perpetuate uh, a stereotype. It's but. called uh, shirako, mm-hmm. and it's uh, like fish's testicles, but they're inside mm. the fish, so it's like... Uh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, and you can eat them raw, or you can eat them cooked, and they're really tasty. <laughs> oh. Shirako. Uh, oh can't yeah. get them here. Oh, yasume nasai. <laughs> oh, yes, we're not saying. <laughs> Fish that's have that's testicles? They're, they're inside the body, yeah. What the fuck? Well, and so... <laughs> yeah, right? That's, <laughs> that's why I'm not a life scientist. I'm a physical scientist. Yeah, I don't want to know nothing about that. <laughs> uh, I would avoid uh, that subject. How does this Shrubs stuff get out? Fine. No, I won't. <laughs> I mean, yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, lots of roe or like um, eggs as well are tasty. Kazunoko herring roe is mm. another favorite of mine. What is the uh, the thing on, on the back called? The little pouchy business on the, on the uh, back? Yeah, it's a little, yeah. It's a pa- I've always wondered like, what is the purpose of this? Because you can't exactly put things in it. So this is taiko or like drum obi, but the obi is this long piece of material that you have to um, expertly um, like yeah, weave sash. around yourself. And uh, so, yeah, what is the purpose of this thing? I've often thought, uh, I think it's like uh, to make you sit straight or something. Oh, interesting. Uh, it kind of looks cool. So the thing about Japanese kimono is like, um, the whole thing is like, uh, you need straight lines. And I think that's that's, speaks to like the body type of the people who um, develop this tradition, right? So like you don't like in Europe you have the um, I don't even know what era this would be like Baroque, but Victorian maybe just tight waist and like um, voluptuous like curves that's mm. the total opposite of what you're going for with kimono. So um, I actually have to like um, I mean I don't have big breasts so that's not a problem but um, I put like um, they have like a special pad that you put on your back and wrap your uh, waist with a towel so that like this line is straight you just want straight li- straight lines everything is straight what is it uh, I love those. The, what's this? Some of my favorite lines. Like if are anything, straight. if any, if, if anything's curvy, that's actually like a. Ooh, well. well, it's just not the it's style. Out, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Well, they don't. I mean, they don't really have like curves so much as maybe you're. I'm tripping out on, on the face and the back. I know. Right? Right? <laughs> it's fine. My mind too. Yeah. You're kind of uh, never off duty. Yeah. yeah you know, I know. Like is the word is, is the word kimono? Uh, kimono. Is, is, is that referencing a a whole style or just the so, garment? Ki, kimono. Mm-hmm. Ki means wear and mono means thing. So oh, it's just okay. things you wear. So it is like a, it's a style. It's like La Cosa Nostra, this thing of ours. It's just garments. Sure. Like, yeah, it's, just, it's, just, it's just garments, yeah, yeah. yeah. But I mean, it is a certain style of garment. I now, mean, this now, is d- now, do you, do you rock a, a kimono just around town or is, is this a special Sometimes. event? Yeah. Oh, well, this, I'm, I mean, this is special. But yeah, I do wear kimono sometimes That's around awesome. town. And so yeah. you're, you're visiting from Japan and you're, you're, you're going back home soon or? Yeah, in a, in in a week home is or home is Osaka for you, yeah. or outside of Osaka. Yes, yeah, that's awesome. Um, yeah, I came. Okay, here. so you came you you came up to me at the drawing room and you gave me a uh, folded piece of paper well, and you I, said, "There's a story." Yeah, there's origami. A story. I, well, it's, oh, I, I would. You know, no, I know. I know. Pretty entry I know. level. I know. I do origami. I, wanted, I know it's just that. Yeah, yeah I made a floor, a tatami. Or a wall. So that a was tatami. just a, that was a copy. Right. But I brought my own. You said you had a what? story. Yes, I have a story. To I got tell. no applause. Um. <laughs> you just you whipped that out with such style. So uh, this is a story of why I came here and what Harmontown means to me. 
Um, I want to read part of it, uh, but to set it up. Uh, real, real Keith, quick, you uh, cool? We'll, for camera, it's, yeah. you know, it's, it's, it's better if you sit. No, okay. I'm good. I kind of want to act out part because of the it. Cameras, but, the cameras uh, are aimed I was proud for, of my tie for, for, about a half okay? hour ago. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You've done fantastic. <laughs> um, I'm going to like lavish you. I'll bring you down, but uh, bring you back up in the end. This, so I was um, really depressed. Like this was only a couple months ago, maybe two and a half or so. And uh, yeah, I'd like it was over the course of six months that it just got worse and worse, and then like I downward spiraled at the end there, and I couldn't. Uh, I mean, I just didn't want to be awake. And I was listening to this podcast, um, like just waking up and listening to it, just to that was my lifeline. Um, so that's the context. Um, well, actually, uh, okay. Um, in uh, leading up to that, I, I named you Will Drosten. I, uh, uh, Is that okay? <laughs> Will Drosten. Mm. Um, to protect my identity. Uh. <laughs> oh, man. Or, or, or you're going from here to Doug Benson's podcast. And you're like, I named is. you Will Drosten. And he's like, that's great, I'm high. And then you're off to Joe Rogan, and you're like, I named you Will Drosten. And he's like, have you tried DMT? <laughs> um, <clears throat> uh, I found Will Drust on, on Hey Ho Kool Aid, which is also a made up name of a podcast that. Uh, Welcome, with a oh. glad you are with us. Uh, the Duncan, Duncan Trussell, Trussell family. Yeah. Are. Okay. Uh, I had never heard of him before. Excuse me. Uh, I started the episode in the car after dropping my friend off on the opposite side of the city. I was fumbling with the controls while getting lost in a maze of basket-woven overpasses and tunnels, trying to rewind. I had to concentrate to follow what he was saying, and it wasn't because he was intentionally obfuscating to trick his interlocutors into assuming he is intellectually superior. Lots of people would call him a creative genius, a term that gets bandied about, especially in Hollywood. Some people hate his guts, uh, but I can't imagine that gets to him, he who describes himself as a fat, stupid piece of shit. <laughs> Maybe he is. Uh, <laughs> a nerd, an entertainer, a solipsist, a pariah, an exemplar of redemption, a pariah once more, and once more redeemed, endlessly cycling along the curved quadrants of a four-act narrative whose structure he believes is so deeply etched into our cognitive apparatuses, his tongue-in-cheek cameo on an episode of The Simpsons depict him drawing this circle on a whiteboard. He doesn't claim to have discovered it, only to have successfully harnessed it to make a lot of money. His was a particularly delicious swirl of intricately webbed thoughts spun through articulatory prowess and above all, an unabashed, unadulterated self-loathing. He didn't try to gloss over his twistedness, his fetishes, his alcohol and drug consumption, or ironically, his shame. He knew where his faults lie and rather than deny them, he called them out in the loudest voice possible. It felt so good to watch someone do that. It was healing. I listened to that podcast like medicine, skating the razor's edge of self-righteousness and masochistic humility. I loved how they played on stage. I want friends to play with like that, I thought, adrift in an ocean of empty beer cans and unwashed dishes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, um, oh, yeah. oh, wait, oh wait, it's not done. Oh, wait, wait, it's not done. So, um, <laughs> so, is, so. Um, Chapter two. <laughs> <laughs> so, so. Um, I had this dream where I met you, and we were partners, not necessarily in a romantic way, Business but... Business partners. We yeah. owned a pizza place together. <laughs> we were friends, and um, uh, at the end of our misadventures, we end up on opposite sides of the street. We're like in our own houses on opposite sides of the street, and we're talking on the landline, and you've got a bunch of like creatures and characters in the room with you, and I'm alone over here, but uh, we're laughing and joking, and I look out the window and notice that uh, you've left your suitcase on the front porch with the door wide open. 
And so I tried to like weave that into our banter, but it didn't track. So I said, I'm going to come over and tell you a secret. And you were like, oh my god. And so you came outside, and um, you were kind of surprised when I just walked past you, maybe like ruffled your hair, put the suitcase inside, closed the door, and I walked back over to you, and... Chapter three. Uh, All right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I kiss the top of your head. And at that moment, I am instantly and utterly overwhelmed by the most intense feelings of gratitude, compassion, love in its myriad forms, the entire fucking universe. Boom! <laughs> a bolt of lightning cracks, and I wake up. There's a thunderstorm <coughs> passing outside. Tears stream down my face as I blissfully bathe in the sensory Epsom salts of having been seen, been held, and understood. I lie there for a few moments. The bath bubbles are popping. The tub water is draining. I move to get up, but something gently urges, just enjoy these moments. They will be over soon enough. I sit on the edge of my bed, open the door, and listen to the rain, still awash with the feeling of having spent intimate time with someone whom I adore and admire, but we're strangers, right? What was that bolt of lightning? What about the rising sun streaming perfectly through that embrasure? What about that repeated topic of conversation? What about that stranger? Why are you connecting dots if there is no benevolent force assigning them ordered numbers? How can these be assembled to form a picture in a universe that doesn't deign to move you in any particular direction? What hit next collided with another bolt of lightning that cracked so loud and near my window that I jumped up and turned around, heart pounding, half expecting someone to walk through the door. The benevolent force is you. It's you, it's you, it's you, it's you. If you choose benevolence, you are the engine of the force field that is blasting through the architecture of your consciousness and all of its contents. You are God. All right. Thank you, Ashlyn. Absolutely beautiful. Ashlyn, everybody. Yeah. Oh, that's wow. incredible. Yeah. Thank Holy you so moly. much. I mean, you don't, like, 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 we started doing this podcast, like, you don't, like, like, remember Adam Goldberg? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Sounds like he's here. Like, the first... If, if the, you say his th name three times, he'll, be, he'll appear on stage. The first thing was, like, do you, is this a safe place? And if it is, do you, do you bully anybody? Do you, do you shut anybody out? Uh, I, 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 that was such gorgeous prose. Uh, and, and it... Uh, I could go on about how it's it's it should not be applied to me, but that's not what's important. I, the the prose kind of included that the O rings were in place there, like like right. she she was able to create like an expression of like oh this rubber ring could connect to anybody really or that's you know I, I that, that's so flattering so beautiful. What, I, what, what I, blows my mind is like it, the people like for some reason over like, how long we seven years we've been doing this. No, I think I've got it's a there. million. I, I, I and uh, what uh, pa paste uh, dot com magazine dot org dot edu. Uh, somebody somebody said we're one of the top ten podcasts of the decade, which I, I didn't realize was like we're nearing the end of a decade. Top thirty. Uh, one of the <laughs> mo <laughs> top thirty. <laughs> the one of the, yeah, one of, I was oh, gonna uh, say. <laughs> I wish. Don't get me wrong. It's no, a millennial. Yeah. Affliction. We were like, we were like number we twenty-one have, uh, out of thirty. I think. Yeah. All right. All right. Fine. <laughs> I thought it was, it was somebody. I guess somebody polished that knob for me before. We might end. have been in the top ten. <laughs> but like, I thought it was, I, 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 I was I, in the I top meet, ten. I mean, so, like over the last couple of days, like people have been coming, uh, like as you know, like strange pilgrimage to the drawing rooms to come, like say hi and go to the show and meet up with other uh, Harmontown fans, and it's. It's really crazy. Like, like you, you guys came from everywhere. It's, it's, it's amazing. Has anybody <laughs> not been to Los Angeles before tonight? Like, like well, most I, of them. Most what? of them. That's awesome. I, I met uh, Sarah in Austin. Nice. Uh, you guys are from Chico. Chico. Oh, you're California. Nice. My dad awesome. went there for school. 
There's a uh, what? Uh, Je- yeah, Je- Jennifer from Pennsylvania. Uh, Samson and Riley from where? Uh, where's okay? Well, uh, what's Vancouver, your name from yeah. uh, Vancouver? What's your name, buddy from Vancouver? <laughs> Samson Dan- and Riley. Dan- Danny from Vancouver. Come oh, up here. Oh shit. Uh, cause I met him at the drawing room and he... Bring it up. Where's he at? Uh, there he is. What he, what he said, Danny from Vancouver. Danny. Not to put a lot of pressure on you, but what yeah. he said was, you had been working on a Dan Harmon impression that was... Oh, yeah! That yeah. was... Oh, here we go. That was one word long, and you had it about 30% of the way. <laughs> Yeah. And I was like, all right, come up and share it. Yeah, it's a sound and a word. <laughs> Sorry to expand upon what I promised you <laughs> earlier. Look, this I is mean, a bait I, and switch. I feel comfortable. <laughs> I'll, <laughs> I'll go. I'll a, a, as we near the end of me being a public figure, I'm like, honestly, I would have loved to have seen a lot more impressions of me <laughs> from the James Adomians of the world. Like, I've, I've solicited it. So whatever you can give me, I love it. Yeah, I tried. My, my friend Samson put me onto your podcast about nine months ago. I started binge listening, and uh, there was just one word that I picked up on that I thought uh, quintessentialized Dan Harmon, and maybe I could possibly imitate you on. So I need Jeff's help. Okay. I just need you to end sort of a non sequitur, an irritating story that Dan would find. <laughs> it, just something that, he, you know, whether... Right. And you mean fucking her? Just anything, okay. sort of like end of a okay. end of a story, and then I'll yeah. Okay. And the major D turned to me and said, "Thank you." <sighs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> <laughs> Danny from Vancouver. <laughs> Danny, everybody. <laughs> you better get out of here, Danny. Uh, All right, thank you. Give it up for Danny, everybody. <laughs> Thanks, man. Yeah. Rob was rolling around this chair. He made Rob go crazy. Do <laughs> you know what I realized tonight? Rob Schraub is the Rudy Giuliani of the Harmon Chat administration. <laughs> That's exactly what he is. He's like, friend or foe? We don't know. Like, it's like, ah, I don't know. Like, 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 if you watch like Seth Meyers' impression of Rudy Giuliani, it's like, like that's, yeah. Uh, no, uh, oh, oh, you don't like that? Neither would Rudy. F- fuck it, who else came from way far away? It's your birthday. What's your name, sir? Josh. Josh, where are you from? San Antonio. San Antonio, bring it up, Josh. <laughs> Happy birthday. <laughs> You guys okay? Cavalcade of stars. Josh, when you get up here, uh, Steve Sutherland's going to diagnose you on the spectrum. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> there he is. Where, where are we at, uh, Steve, so far on the neurodiversity? It's 9-11. Uh, nice. Uh, <laughs> nice to see you. What up, Josh? Happy birthday. How, how old are you today? I'll be 37 on Thanksgiving. That's not your fucking birthday then, Josh. I know. I, I lied to you. I'm sorry. <laughs> Oh, come on. Hey, how many of y'all got booed on stage today? <laughs> lies. It's all lies. I made Dan lies. Harmon laugh. All right. Oh, shit. My, jo- okay, Josh, you're from San Antonio. I am. I'm yes. going to be there in a few days. Uh, what's, that, what's that bar? They used to be an old billiard hall where they have fuck off deviled eggs. It's got like a neon sign out front. I don't know. I'll take you somewhere better. Okay. <laughs> well, you've, you've, lied to, you've lied to me once already, Josh. <laughs> all right. Well, in... The show's defense, you did say, Who's from somewhere else? And he was like, San Antonio. You're like, Come up here. So, right. Like, I'm uh, on his side if anyone's like, Boo! Because he didn't ask for this. They didn't ask he, for it. He yelled out, It's my birthday. I did. I, I totally believe All right. It so, it's not, and it's not. It's no. not. But, no. but, right. We're, we're. Now, let's, uh, let's get to work. Uh, what do you think you're. <laughs> You, th- you think maybe you're autistic, or did you write a beautiful letter about like the fucking nature of my soul? I, I, I have a question. Qu- where's good your job. fucking kimono? First off, <laughs> I could recite some poetry. No, oh, but yes. Community is like hands down my favorite show. On behalf of everyone who loves it, thank you very much for making that. 
I've seen it about 500 times from beginning to end, and I think that has something to do with autism. I know the finding comfort in the repetition, um, and it. You know, as someone who also doesn't have a whole lot of friends, like this show does, it, it gives you that sense of community. I think it's one of Maslow's hierarchy of, you know, self-realization that you... Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Continue. Yeah, that you... you... Well, Ma Maslow had nine other hierarchies that are, are less publicized. <laughs> That, but, and for good reason. Maslow's hierarchy. So is there, Maslow is there a, the hierarchy, hierarchy of, of Maslow's crushing hierarchies puss. there? <laughs> Which was a best-selling book. Uh, it was like, like, like there were like nine steps. He had a, a, a hierarchy of surfing, uh, a hierarchy of uh, of, uh, of, uh, of uh, red uh, cabbage diet. Okay. All right, sorry, I, 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 I can't riff. I'm go to the carpet again. Well, a, a sense, yeah. of, a sense <laughs> of community. Is... Maslow's hierarchy of carpet. <laughs> <laughs> All right, sorry. C continue, please. Draw fire. Um, well, no, I, I had a question about community. Can Chang astral project? <laughs> Okay, there, there, there's an episode where they all go out to, uh, and you know, Britta wants to spray paint the the billboard or whatever, and she's hanging out with Michael, and then Chang right. is like running through the theater, but no one acknowledges him whatsoever. And then there's another time right. at the at the table where just like no one acknowledges him, and I'm like, is he really there? Is well, he Abed's imaginary friend? Yeah, that was the the idea was that he might he himself might be a ghost. <laughs> Or, or he might have been interacting with ghosts all night. Well, if you, I would imagine if you could astral project that you could interact That's your with ghost. ghost. Right. That, your astral projection is yeah, a ghost. Yeah, and I, I just, like, like, thank you. I love that episode. And I, God, like, that episode, how about John Oliver as a dramatic actor? Yeah. Oh. Uh, let me ask you a question, not to fire oh, back please. in your face, but in this weird time of community being shopped around as a streaming uh, thing, if uh, maybe something on the table were like, oh, uh, uh, we'd pay more if you did uh, one, uh, more episodes or if you did a movie or whatever. I wrote a script for it if you want it. I'll, e I'll email it to you. That's not what I was, where I was going, but <laughs> as a consumer, which is what you are. Indeed. Don't lose sight. Uh... Uh, What's that? Would you oh, would, like? Would you? <laughs> do you want to like? Wait, would you want to see a community movie? Absolutely. Yes. Like, 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 One, oh, okay. yes. All right. Wait. Stop. Stop. Yes. <laughs> that's it wasn't that's done. an easy yes. Pierce? I mean, uh, I was who wants free with my ice cream? I was like, I was like would you want to see a community movie that was a like? Do you want to see everybody? Like, I mean, what does that entail? Like I, I, I only want to ask you because, like, you know, even though, like, I just want to complain about this for a second while I'm drunk. Uh, for a second, if I was Parks and Rec, it would just be like, oh, should I sell to Netflix or the Peacock? No, it's it's community, so it's like, well, are you going to make a movie or not? I'm sure Netflix would buy it in like half a heartbeat. But yeah, I'm sure they'd buy a lot of fucking Do Netflix, <laughs> fucking Do Walmart of TV. Fuck. You could you could do it as an animation. Uh, you know, Bojack Horseman's canceled, but everyone was watching it. Like, like I'm sorry, I'm sorry. All right, okay. Thank you, All Josh. Right. Welcome. Uh, let's give it up for Josh, everybody. Thank you, brother. All right. Are, are All you right. friends of uh, Riley and Sam? Let's get out of the television business. Nobody nobody heard that. Okay. Uh, Steve, yeah. Steve uh, yeah. uh, look, yeah. uh, uh, you're a deadhead. Yes. You worked true. with Allen Ginsberg. I did. You're 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 a gay wait, married wait, what? journalist. You work with Ginsburg? I was his teaching assistant. What the hell? Yeah, when I was a teenager. That's why um, I love him. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's fucked up. Star fucker. You fucking star fucker. <laughs> we fu knew it. <laughs> hey, it got me here tonight. Exactly. <laughs> what other qualifications do I have? You're a chemistry teacher. You're like, hey, potassium plus fluoride equals <laughs> potassium fluoride. I don't, I don't think that's how it works. Okay, all right. <laughs> Look, uh, Keith, what, what's your favorite uh, hydrocarbon? <laughs> uh, top five. Top, top, top five. five hydrocarbons. <laughs> Me methane, ethane. No, just go in order? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I got yeah. a soft spot for hexane. Oh, oh okay. Yeah. Oh, wow. damn. That's a fucking hot take. That's a fucking, yeah. yeah. That's, that's, a, that's a sentence uh, I never <laughs> thought I would hear today. <laughs> it's a sentence I've never said before. All right. 
Now, is hexane a hydrocarbon? Yeah. Great. <laughs> it, it's like six ames. And it's, uh, I'm sure there's exothermic reactions involved there, right? Well, it's, it's pretty flammable, yeah. 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 Shit. It's uh, actually it's a cool demo that you ca- the the it evaporates and the vapor is both heavier than air and super flammable. So you can pour <laughs> it like down a ramp to a candle and then it burns up the whole ramp. Keith, that's right. a good one for five dollars out yeah. of my own pocket. At what temperature <laughs> is methane liquid? Oh. <laughs> I literally just taught about the boiling points of <laughs> hydrocarbons last week, and I don't know. You can look at the periodic table. Oh, yeah, shit. no. I, it's, it's cold. It's, <laughs> it's really cold. It's got to be real cold. It's right? got to be real yeah, you cold. you got to be on one of the moons. It's got to be real like a, cold. So there, That's pretty much the level of expertise I bring to my classroom. <laughs> yeah. What's there, the boiling point of this? Real cold. Really cold. Kids. <laughs> Are there so like seas cold. of it? Like, man, as, as far yeah. as I'm concerned, you're bulletproof because you tied a motherfucking bow tie without looking. Like, like, that. Well, you are you. now. And while being yelled at. Yeah. Uh, you're I, you're, I, you're I, my I, Superman. Is it, is it, is it, it, you know, if it's prying, whatever, because you have students, whatever. I, 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 like, like, how did you guys meet? That's what I want to know. Oh, how did uh, I want to hear this. Let's oh, not say the vote. name of the group. We won't. Yeah. Um, we met on the online before the web. Yeah. Um, I had written an article for Wired about gay and lesbian teenagers building community on America Online. And everybody said, yeah, America Online sucks, but check out Usenet. So I went to Usenet, and I had just spent a month and a half interviewing these little gay kids who were, like, saving each other from suicide and taking each other in when they ran away from their abusive parents and whatnot. And the first thing I see on Usenet was some bitchy queen saying, oh, these young gay kids these days, they're all airheads and twinks. <laughs> they're squandering the freedoms we fought so hard for at Stonewall. Oh, Keith. And, 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 uh, it, it was not no, me. No, it was not you. <laughs> it was not me. No, His roommate. No. It's better yeah, than no. that. And so, so, so I wrote back and I said, no, actually, they're amazing. And uh, you know, I have this article in Wired Magazine, blah, blah, blah. Keith wrote me the next day and said, are you the same Steve Silverman who reviews Grateful Dead shows ah! for this online community called The Well? Yeah. That's and he, the connection is the dead? It's yeah. true. And he, and, he, and he said, gay deadheads are rare, which was true. And so I walked into a... We, gay we, deadheads are rare. Yeah, they, yeah. they, they are. Well, They're more common now, but yeah. I imagine, well, anything deadhead is rare, like black deadheads are rare. Yeah. That, well, women deadheads are, are rare. Yes. Well, there's only there are a lot of women, lot of women deadheads. Okay, well, they're half yeah, the yeah. planet. There are zero yeah. gay parrot heads. There's only, there's, there are no gay parrot heads. <laughs> anyway, yeah, we have but better it, taste than that. But anyway, so. <laughs> that's true. So a, after I talked to Keith on the phone a couple times, I went to meet him at a brew pub in Berkeley. And I walked in, we had not talked about our ages or our appearance. And so I am 12 years older than Keith. I'm a oh, tub of Oh, that's so lard. gross. Um, I know, it's gross. I'm 12 years I, older than Cody. Pedophilia. So, uh, so in any case, I walked into the brew pub, and there was this fucking gorgeous guy. And I, th- I thought to myself, oh, this is going to be a nightmare for him. He's going to think, like, I'm some old troll from the internet. But actually, he liked me, and we liked <laughs> each other. <laughs> and we've been together for 25 years. Wow. <laughs> and a... Uh, and a, about a month, about a month and a half after we met, we were on fish tour together. We were. <laughs> okay, so, we like, went to a uh, show in Chico. Actually, the only time I've but been to Chico, I saw make fish the play in a gym. Dave Matthews. No, no, oh, no. Oh God, no. We have better taste than that. No, no, no. Ix like, day. Steve's, yeah. Steve's not here. But can, like, can I? Yeah. Can I ask you guys both? So you're both deadheads and fish, fish, yes, fish fans. food. What do you, what do you call fans. fish lovers? Fans, fish uh, fans with a ph. What fish fins? Fish. Fans. 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 Fin- Fanatics, yes. they call them. What, what is, wh- I, and I'm not talking shit, what is the appeal of Deadhead, like, like, like Grateful Dead and Fish? Because I, I listen to it and I, I, I don't really like, get it. Yeah, it's improv, you know, jazz style improvisation right. applied to rock and roll music, basically. Right. So if you, you know, if you think, if you hear jazz and you think, boring, you probably won't like the dead or fish. Right, dig. Right. It's because you're watching transparency on stage. You're wa- right. You're, yeah. like they're doing something. They're going like, "Hey, let me try this." Boom, 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 right. boom. And then right. like, yeah. oh, oh. Is, it, is, it, is it really all improv, or are they, are they doing like they have, they have obviously songs? That they we have all songs, know. but they improvise segues and they. Um, 
a lot of so the, they'll just in, do like they'll just they'll just riff for a while. So we yeah. no, it's not pretty just big riffing. Hypocrites. That's that's such an important distinction. It's not just riffing. It's more like narrative storytelling without words, basically. Yeah. Using but improvisationally. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Wow. Yeah, and it's yeah. it's uh, fish for me. The the uh, what I love about their improvisations and their style is that they build these sort of repetitive. Um, and yet s subtly, slowly changing sort of patterns. And I swear it's just like how my brain works. Like I do, I do great thinking at fish shows. Really? Yeah. Like they'll, That's actually I, a big thing for both Dead and Fish is that it gives one a chance to be alone with oneself in a really beautiful way in a crowd of people. Yeah. I love being alone around people. That's, that's one of my yeah. favorite things. Yeah, yeah. Our friend Harris Whittles was a big fish guy had a mm -hmm. whole podcast about like talk, yeah. come at me about fish yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. and that was his whole thing it was like right. he would write on parks and rec and was like a valued employee and then he'd go to fish concerts and he was like that's i'd never heard it described that way though that it's a way to actually it allows you to keep people at a distance well, now, right. now that, now yeah, that jerry's of. gone uh do, do you still go uh, do they still have dead shows uh they do the, the dead do, company do, with do, do you still go to them not so much. It was Jerry. Know. Jerry was a big piece. Jerry of was a genius. So, but fish, like, let's say I, uh, who don't know anything about any of this, if I went to, like, just walked in cold to a fish show, what do you think my neurotypical? You might think it was really boring. Yeah. Um, yeah. And you might think the lyrics were nonsense. And you think that most of the fans are robotic cult members. <laughs> well, like I, I was, you in know, a, I was say in a, things in unison. I was in like a, in a dive bar in um, Orlando, Florida, and a. Giant group of people came in, and there was a uh, Jimmy Buffett show had just broken up, and a bunch of you know fifty year old fifty something sixty something parrot heads came in, and they were the nicest, happiest fans I've ever met in my That's life. Great. And so it's like like the, there must be something going on because I, when I hear Jimmy Buffett, I want to take my own life. No, I know exactly. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Well, uh, you know, I'll tell you something. Actually, there is, believe it or not, a Dan Harmon Grateful Dead. Uh, connection, which is that I'm in, well, I'm, in, yeah, I'm, in, yeah. I'm in. Which is that one of the things that we've been hearing about all <laughs> night tonight is misfit power. Right. That's how Bob Weir said it uh, about the Grateful Dead. That's what drew people to the Grateful Dead because no, they were not cute. No, they were not stylish. No, it didn't matter if they were you know had a hit record or not. People would be uh, self-selecting into the community of Deadheads. And just because you love the music and you like the people and you love to have a good time around these people, but not a good time like those other people have, but this good time. And I think community has self-selected in the same way for people who haven't felt at home in other places in the world, but really feel at home here. Yeah. I, I, uh, uh, uh. We're like juggalos. <sighs> All right. Ooh, who, 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 how, how, how do you guys feel about Rush? The best. <laughs> uh, not, not our yeah. Oh, Don't, don't ask us about every band. That's rock, rock rush. I, I'll go. I, okay, I, lightning yeah. bonus round. Name bands. <laughs> <laughs> like when I listen to Phil Collins, like nobody, nobody has the relationship with Phil Collins that I have. Except I had, I had a roommate <laughs> once who, who had the same relationship with Phil Collins that I had. It was like, and we would go like, yeah, she seems to have an invisible touch, and we were like, we were into it. It was. It, it, it did. Phil Collins wasn't doing anything wrong, and uh, yes, we were doing something was. right. Yes, by he was. Together. He was. You dicks. I, I, that's Phil the thing. Collins. I, that, like, like, correct me if I'm wrong. Not to high road him, but go ahead and fucking high road him. <laughs> like, that's the shit you're escaping when you become a deadhead yes, or true. a fish yeah. fan. It's like you're yeah. escaping the fucking snobbery. Right? Uh -huh. uh, <laughs> Dan's flipping off Jeff. <laughs> no, because... You're escaping the banality. Really. Like, you're, you're yeah. just like, hey, you know what? I don't know anything about fucking why this is good or bad music, but I'm just going to hang out. Yeah, I mean, like, yeah, but, yeah, but, uh, Phil Collins, you know, he's not my favorite. Right. But, 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 no, no, but, Collins? but when you when you sing Sue it's, Studio... It's, it's, it's who was there. It's my eggshell. What eggshell did you eat when you were fucking yeah. big, going from an embryo to an, a chicken? I, 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 like love a, Neil, a, I love Neil Diamond way too much. Uh, people People have a people, like love hate, and I would never take time. that away from you. No, because I'm a good friend. <laughs> <laughs> Phil Collins. <laughs> I mean Neil Diamond. 
Come on. There's not even a fucking contest there. Oh, there is. But who? But who, who <laughs> he was a, a Jew. Bill Collins is a, a, like, like, a, Neil Dunn was a make Jew. Your biopic. He was now. a Jew who sang gospel. Oh music. my God! Phil Collins is a drummer in a band that should never have existed. <laughs> I, I, like, I agree. He's the fucking okay, drummer, we agree. We and agree he ended up the that. master. We agree like, on like, that. Like, the, 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 next, you're gonna say you love Sting and the Police, like fucking boo. I don't. Sting's great. I Fuck love the all police. of you people. <laughs> also, Outcast, fun to listen to. I don't understand you people. I don't get it. Hey ya, like it's a good song. Shut it's up, a toe Kobe. tapper. I don't Shut get up, it. I, like 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 I have the music snobbery. I don't I, I, I don't I, I don't know where it's supposed to end. What what is, what is your what, what is your guilty pleasure uh, band shop? Like 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 the, band? where you're like like people go like well, what like kind of band? music are you into? And you're like oh well I'm not gonna mention this because I don't want to be made fun of. Well I like Oingo Boingo. <laughs> do you like Enya? Yeah I do like Enya. That's Sail one maybe, away. Right? Yeah. Fucking sail good. Away. Sail away. Fucking sail away. away. Steve, Steve, what is it? So you're a deadhead. You're, you, you're, you're super hip. You get your Ginsburg, San Francisco, married gay journalist credits. Now tell us, who's the fucking, oh, like, what's the, what's the, what's the, what's the Spotify <laughs> thing you click well, that you're embarrassed I, about? I, I, well, oh, no. es- especially on this stage. This is you're going to ruin that appetite. All. all right, you're competing. I think is Sting, that the Sting bag <laughs> rocks? Is that, is that the box amazing. of candy we all shit in? Like, there's too many things happening at once here. <laughs> what? <laughs> Rob... Well, you do me a favor, and also, it, uh, it's only for, for visual. I, w- I was talking about Billy Zane earlier. Will you just do, take your glasses off again? No, give, I'm not going to. G- you just give me, your, old give me your, non, your non-verbal, your non-verbal, don't your do your it. non-verbal, I don't even just, what I did. just facial Billy Zane. Don't Dan, do tell it. him I don't, I don't have to do it. Did you say sticks? Is that what you're saying? No, sting. Sorry. Sting, I yeah. With I, you. Sting's sting voice, is, uh, give me a break. Yeah. And like, are we going to pretend sting. there's nothing remarkable about Sting's right. voice? Again. Oh, yeah, let's all go to our graves in denial. Right. That's r- ridiculous. Yes. Police. And I almost no. said retarded. But I changed Nick's it to ridiculous. Give me some Billy Zane. Just because for a Sting taught just me for patience. A just do a little. Uh, just give me one second. He's, Billy Zane. He's pimping me, and I don't want to. Uh, what? What? You, you don't want to do Billy Zane? Don't no, do it. No, I, I mean, you put me on the spot. I don't want to. I had do the it. time I die, oh. man. <laughs> It's Come good. on, just do your fucking... Fuck All right, wait, off. wait, Shrop, wait. You were a shit to me last week in the writer's room. <laughs> Talk of dish. You were so dish. mean. Whoa. You were oh. so dish. mean. Whoa. Dish. You about? Thursday. You, you did a great job. No, you said, you said, I just want to beat the living hell out of you Oh right my now. God, you were being such a dick the whole day. I was not a being a dick. I was not. I'm trying to help save your show. Oh my God, you wrote a great script and then you're just like, the next week, you're just like, blah, 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 blah. you're like yeah, an eight year old child. I'm 46. Like, why are you going to act like that? I was just like, like what did I do I, that deserved You're just sitting there, like, violence. struggling. I'm trying do your to help fucking you, like, write a good show and you're do just your, like, bleh, bleh. I'm like, I'm like, I'm like, I'm like, I'm like, I oh, just want to beat and do the that. living hell out I was, of you. I really, and I, that, I meant you, that. I know. I know. Yeah. Like why I know. Man, I know. And you're it. not a violent because guy. Because I, I like I wanted to beat you. You wanted to with a beat baseball me. bat. I told that to Kate. And I said, Dan yeah. said, said he wanted he to wanted to beat me with a baseball bat. And you know what she said? If she's a good partner, what did you do? Yeah, <laughs> she did. Because I was. Because I was saying it like I didn't because she be, knows yeah. you. Why are you smiling? Yeah, and I'm like, because oh, it was. I awesome. did it. I got Dan to threaten to beat me with a baseball bat, and if Kate is the, the, the woman hell? I know she is, she was like, "What, what did, did you, you do? do?" Yes. What did you, you do? Just what, fucking why what did you do? Everybody hang Dan? in there. We have a gold mine in front of us. Seventy episodes. Everyone, keep your cool. <laughs> Let's all just make a bunch of money. Right. Yeah. What were we talking about? Billy Zane! Billy Zane. No, wait. Okay. Do your Billy Zane, or I'll give you this option. <laughs> because one of the best impressions I've ever seen Rob Schraub do, uh, d- we, d- were, we were in L.A. not that long, and Schraub was like, Schraub came to, Schraub said, I'm, 
I'm pretty sure I uh, <laughs> I think I think Nicholas Cage uh, drove by me on a motorcycle today. <laughs> and this is like 20 years ago. And I was like, well, how do you know it was Nicholas Cage? He's like, well, I was he was wearing a helmet. And I was like, well, then how in the world, how on earth would you know it was Nicolas Cage? And Schraub answered my question by holding a folder in front of his face and with his eyes and eyebrows alone, convinced, going like, oh, that's Nicolas Cage. So. Nice. <laughs> nice. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> For five dollars a month, you can see what just happened. <laughs> Go to harmontown.com. You're like, why? Give why? Me how the, Rob, you? Rob, just for me. I want to fucking Ju- do just it. For Happy me. birthday, give dictionary. Me, give bullshit. me a little fucking Billy I'm thing. not a. <laughs> I don't want to do it. You, you, right, you, just, read you just the room. Nic- you just did Nicholas Cage. You That's just fine. Nicholas Cage. I what gave it? him that out. He did that. That's fine. Okay. Yeah, oh, that was a choice. What'd you do that made Dan so mad? Well, Dan said he wanted a, a. He was working on his panic room. Sure. And then I said, and I said, I said you should have a, a panic at the disco room. No, that's not. <laughs> well, that's. And Dan, then he that's said, not, "That's a great I idea." I just want to take a bat. <laughs> that's a and great idea. Beat the hell out of you! I just want to beat. <laughs> and he was like, "And I mean it." That's and not. I mean it. Nothing and, about that is accurate. That is so true. <laughs> that's not. Nothing and about I, that is accurate. No, it's totally so, accurate. So Dan, you wanted to beat no, the hell out of me. No, I was talking about what? the fucking show. I'm no. trying to write Rick and Morty with you. Right. And I said halfway through a rant, as I riff, I go like, "Oh well, I don't know. Uh, maybe it'd be like a thing like this, and I don't want to be like that." And I and I said, as I want to, I re- I said like, "Oh, well, then that would be like a Christopher Durang thing." And like I, it's, it's like, like in my mind, I was like, I was, I was going like, well, maybe the, it's like so much metaphor that it's absurd. And you hang a lantern on it. I don't even know what I was referencing. I'm not like a theater major, but I'm like, I got like Christopher Durang. I like throw it out. I throw out a lot of things. I keep talking. I keep talking because I fucking try and I work to keep my show afloat. And this guy's sitting over there. And then it wasn't. It was like he's sitting over there, looking just like he is right now. <laughs> And and I and I and I and he's fifty years old. Don't let him fool you. He's fifty. So he's, there's no excuse for what I'm about to tell you. And I keep going. I'm like, well, what if the what if what if Rick had this relationship with this and blah, so and then do the laser thing and so we don't want the cannon to be this and, blah, and there's finally like silence because my fucking lungs collapse and I'm just like, well, oh, oh, silence. And then Schraub goes. Oh, what would Christopher Durang do? <laughs> and that's when I said, I want to fucking pound your face in. Because you you knew what you were doing. <laughs> because you all you do is sit there and I fucking talk. And I'm like, I'm gonna fucking like talk. Like, and you're then you're like, Christopher Durang. I'm like, fuck you, fuck you. I was I was you know I was mad at you. Yeah. I was mad at you. Yeah. It's and funny. then as soon as I said I want I want I want to beat your face, I was like I'm not mad at you anymore. Yeah, because we've been you guys have been together 25 years. Yeah. Uh, try 30. Yeah. Really, really. And try not fucking. Right. That's, See yeah. if uh, try yeah. that. Yeah. Right, work with Steve Silverman probably, for 25 years and don't fuck him. Yeah. See probably if you can beat handle the hell this out of shit him with a bat too. because you can't. All right. Like it gets fucking, it gets on your nerves sometimes. <laughs> this guy, <laughs> uh, Christopher Durang. Well, fuck you! I didn't really do what the fuck, man. Then I'm why did you like, laugh at my show. panic really in the disco make a show? show? Everyone wants to. Sh- <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to make your life better yeah, by oh, adding you're trying humor. To make your life better. <laughs> adding you, spice. Why don't you guys just fuck? <laughs> <laughs> Finally. You know what? I would, except it would be a disservice to the gay community. Right. <laughs> because it would be two straight guys like reinforcing the I, idea I that fucking fu- is about power. I think after seven years of Harmontown, 
it's high time for some heterosexual grudge fucking. Yeah, I don't know. I won't take part in that. But I was like, like, look, like, Schraub wrote, like, like it'll be 70 years from now, the way Rick and Morty's years. schedule goes. Schraub wrote an amazing script. Schraub is a great writer. Schraub is on Rick and Morty now. Schraub did a great job. I, that's why I don't know why he's being such a fucking cock all the time. Like I'm like I'm just sitting and then like 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 I'm like uh, it's just like I go in and I go like hey guys like, what if the story was about a thing and it was about a thing and then Trump's like about a thing. <laughs> <laughs> but that's and why that, like, that's why Trump is what the are you, greatest. Fucking eight. I don't know. I don't well, know what to tell you. How am I supposed to do it right? I don't know what to tell you. Show you know me. What? No, I don't, I'm not going to let you do that to me. I'm not going to let you uh, uh, tell me what to tell you. Oh, I don't that's, care. I'm glad you're there. Have Dan, have you been on a, a, a show not as like the the top? Like, Have you ever been in Shrop's position where you're like writing? I mean, you have at least a couple times, right? Like in award ceremonies or whatever. As a, as a writer, like you're a staff yeah, writer. Yeah, like, it did, and it didn't go well. well I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not trying to gotcha you or whatever, but it's just no, like... No, yeah, no, I've been... Yeah, you're right. You're exactly right. Like, I'm just The wondering. only capacity is like like award shows for which I won, won, an, won awards. Um, but because that's how you... That's work what? for yeah. yeah. Wait, we, yeah. We, we got the same Emmy. I took mine home. Yeah, I got mine too. Okay, great. <laughs> I mean, it doesn't. It it, it yeah. But like 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 it, it, got, the, got the same. What? Yeah, it, it absolutely is a flaw of mine that I did See, not. He likes well, I'm me. Just, I was this just is wondering. What, this is what somebody who likes me looks like. <laughs> See. Wow. I am not taking sides. Yeah, you this. are. I, yeah, you are. Who's the potassium and who's the nitrate? <laughs> yeah, I want to know. That's all I want to know. All right, now let's get back to these guys for Christ's let, sake. Let, let me ask you a question. Though. Okay. Since the show is winding down, yeah. this yeah. is the penultimate right. show, yeah. is there anything that you guys have always wanted to say to each other that's been like building up <laughs> Ooh. this whole time? I, look, look you man. You never close your eyes anymore when I kiss I know. I, I will say to you, Steve Silverman. Okay. Uh, it has always been a huge thing for Schraub. <laughs> <laughs> like this idea of me as a uh, unavailable person, like this whole thing, like, oh, Dan Harmon's so hard, he's so, like, yeah. It's so easy for him. So what? Like, so but, what? Like, you didn't finish your sentence. What am I saying all the time? <laughs> See, so uh, what am I? What? What? You did an amazing job on that script. Like, uh, you, it you, is you, my it, dream come true that you're working on the show. Like, I, my heart bursts when I wake up in the morning. I'm like, the shit that I've been going through, I'm like, Schraub's on the show now. Like, it's like, holy shit, it's like, like a comforter around me. I'm like, even if, I, like, I'm like, it's so great. Like, like the work that you've done. Like, that's how I express love. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, and that applause says that that's all the love I need to express. <laughs> and so any need beyond that is the need of a faulty person, right? Everyone agrees. A chemistry teacher, a journalist, both dead followers. Everyone agrees that if you need emotionally, you're crippled. Because you could get everything you need from me through output. You've, you've done such a okay, good no, job. No, no, Dan, Dan, you, you fucked it. You fucked it there, right? I wasn't you trying to not you, fuck you, it. You had us and you lost no, us. No, I'm, I'm proving my philosophy true. You're saying the only reason that you love him is, is his value no, to your output, your product. <laughs> you, you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm eight. And I'm eight. I'm set. This what, motherfucker what? likes Sting. What are you supposed to just <laughs> love people and then you're like, hey, I love you. Come, come upstairs. Let's put this pen in your hand. What if you can write this show? No, that would be awful. Do you love him as a friend, as an, as an emotional asset, as, as, as an ally in, in your uh, travels he's and so travails? He's so awkward. He's, you, my, you... he's my brother. Like, like, I, 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 in a world where, where there aren't any, that, 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 that's like... Uh, this, he's... 
Well, what do you what do you people want from me? Like, why, it's like why, why does everybody start laughing at that stuff? Like, like I'm like like oh hey Dan, do a pull up, and then I start doing a pull up, and everyone's like, okay. oh no, go on. Yeah. <laughs> He's, Wait, your, he's, my fucking... he, he's your brother, but say why? Like, like the break but it down. What? He's my brother. Like, 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 what? Like, uh, what? Uh, like, what? Like, forever. Yeah. yeah. What? Why? I get it. What's the? <laughs> why is everybody like? Why is the, always the theme of the show is always like, oh, you guys, like, what? Do you, what do you want me to say? Like, I love you. Like, that's so fucking dumb. Do you? Yeah. Yeah. Well, okay. like, what does it mean if you don't mean it? Like, what was it? <laughs> oh. <laughs> I don't know what, wow. the, I don't know what those oh, words dude. mean. What does a word? What does it uh, mean? Like, those okay. words can be lies. People can go, "I love Hitler." They don't mean it. Like if you don't love Hitler, like wow. that means they you love racism. Yeah, just stop. Just stop. All right, look. <laughs> You See, know. you guys lured me into this no, fucking trap. This is no, what no, always no. happens to me. Hey, Dan, why don't you express yourself as a person? Fucking, p- fucking pussy. Fucking, p- fucking shit face. You don't. You fucking like. You're you're neurodiverse. Fucking shit face. Like they lure me into this. Trap. Just say you love Rob Schraub. We all, I, you, I, lo- I love you, Rob Schraub. This Schraub. is his Billy Zane. Will you leave leave him alone? <laughs> God, he doesn't want a Dan, Billy Zane. Dan, I, I'll give you a choice: either do Billy Zane or tell Rob you love him and, and mean it. You Why did. do you guys have? I love Rob Schraub. I don't want to do Billy Zane. There you yeah, go. Okay. yeah. What yeah. do you guys want? It, 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 it. I don't. I don't approve of any of this. <laughs> <laughs> Is that is that just like do you, is that what the Midwest is? Is just that that, that much withholding? I don't, I don't, yes. I don't, it's the idea, but I Absolutely. love you. I love yeah. you. I love you. It's like a fucking poker chip you put on the table. Like what the fuck does it mean? Like you, it means you like got a chip at the fucking cashier desk. Like, like I love you. Like 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 people go, I love you. I love you too. Like I'm trying. Like Cody's family. Like they say it and I believe them. And I'm like I love you too. It's like hard for me to say it to Cody's dad. But like, like the, those people say I love you, like they're fucking just hanging out, like it's just like farting. And they're just like I love you, <laughs> and like uh, I, lo- I love you too. What? That's like it's not the family I come from. It's Wh- just like like the, those words mean something. Can you help me out? What's here? your love language? Because it sounds like words of affirmation aren't it, but you gotta have one. <laughs> Good point. I mean, it's not like there, it, this is a normal thing that happens. People are like, I don't want all these fucking gifts, you know, or whatever. With, and it's with like Cody, it's like. Like all bets are off. It's just whatever. And I think that maybe part of the problem is that I could, like I look I go I go like oh that's an intimacy thing like uh, love is for partners and that makes it maybe sexual and so maybe then you can't you're not supposed to say I love you to people that you're not partners with. Well, maybe Ke- that's Keith what and Steve, twenty five years. Like, c- can you define what what love is for, between you two? Yeah, we don't want to kill each other every day. <laughs> yeah. Well, we, we take the desire to kill each other and we crumple it down Uh-oh. into a tiny little ball. <laughs> right, right. How are you guys? It's Thanksgiving. What do you guys do? Do you how are, how are your relationships uh, with your families? It's, 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 but that's imp- that's important. Yeah, 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 yeah. But you. <laughs> are, are, are your families hip to uh, your relationship? Are they? Are they are, oh are, yeah, yeah, they are. Um, but. There are some political than, issues. Yeah, um, oh, yeah, my yeah. family is liberal, and Keith's family, not so much. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So the last three years have been terrible for uh, us in that regard, yeah. actually. It, really it, it, really, it was the election that actually created a divide. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the election and the propaganda wave. Because it brought uh, it to the fore. It's true. Yeah. I mean, my mother-in-law literally made us lovely embroidered tea towels with her name before the election. Well, yeah. um, but there's been a breach. When you when, when you guys uh, first declared your love to your families, were, were they both uh, were both sides okay with it, or was it was a little rough? Oh, you have a great story on this one. <laughs> what the uh, the when my dad pulled you aside? Oh yeah, that's right. Um, I w- I was scared to meet Keith's family because. They're like Midwesterners. Keith's dad was literally the mayor of Normal, Illinois. Yep. <laughs> like, like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? I've been there. I, I, j- just outside I, of I, not I, gay Wisconsin. Yeah, right, exactly. <laughs> uh, I, I think of it more as flat Kansas. <laughs> yes, right. the, Neurotypical Wisconsin. Right. Yeah. There, there are you know, trucks all over that town that say Normal Police. Uh, <laughs> oh, that's so a, cool. Nothing to, to see here. Right. Dot com. Right. But so when I met them, you know, I'm a 
Jewish fagola, 12 years uh, <laughs> older than their beautiful blonde son. You know, my parents were communists, et cetera. And yeah, so, I don't think uh, they knew that at the time. Yeah. So. <laughs> but I, I thought that I might be their worst nightmare, frankly. Um, but Keith's dad uh, took me aside and said, we know that you're very special to Keith, so you're very special to us. That's <sighs> awesome. And that, that was wonderful. I want to fucking yeah. die. So I, I, I hope we can find our way back to that. Yeah. I, I, those stories over and over again, every time there's a face-to-face -face encounter, uh, I, it, it, I, I don't want to, yeah, I don't want to publicize anybody. I don't want to out them, but like I have a family member who they're in a certain neighborhood and the, uh, they're, they're in their neighborhood. Um, there's a guy who's like very popular, cool guy, and all the kids play in his yard. And he's like a super cool guy. He's like a stand-up, amazing, cool neighborhood dad guy. And he has a flagpole in his backyard. And he went to some fucking. Tr he went off on some trip, and he had a great time. And good for him. And he paid his money. And he came back with this mega flag, and he hoisted it up on his backyard flagpole. And this friend of mine that all she could see out her back window was this guy's flag, which is where my story would end. I would just come on this podcast and I'd go, I live next door to a piece of shit. He's flying his flag. She went, she talked to him and said, which I wouldn't recommend. I just, I suddenly I'm not on her side for that moment where she goes up to him and goes, uh, I don't, that's not really a flag about, our country or our state or our city. It's a flag about like this political platform. And it's like all I can see out my back window and you're so cool to our kids. And I just, ah, it's right in my face. I like out my window. And the guy's response was like, you're right. It's pretty obnoxious. And he took it nice. down. Wow. It's every, that's every story, Excellent. every wow. story. Like there is that the, I did. There aren't any stories about actual human beings talking to each other where then someone pulls out a machete and goes like, well, I love Trump right. or I love socialism. Like it, 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 like, like any time people are talking to each other, it's basically like, what the fuck are you going to do? Yeah. Well, like, anyways. Uh, well, that's one thing we have to fight our way out of is everybody stereotyping everybody else and having these. That's the, um, that will be yeah. the, the, irony of the internet is like we all got connected and it disconnected all of us right. I, I don't, I, like more than we had ever been because right. when we were all just trapped in apartments watching Welcome Back Cotter right. on a TV our, <laughs> our well, internet Welcome Back Cotter <laughs> Our internet was talking to the random stranger that we did laundry with in the shared laundry room, and the internet now tells us, and not unrightfully so, but tells us, like, that guy that's doing laundry with you, he's a much smaller piece of the puzzle. Like, like, like he's, like, if, you, if you're a true crime fan, that guy's going to kill your daughter and eat her um like it's it's it makes more sense to compartmentalize that person that way it it the internet had like we thought it was going to end uh disconnection and it it was like a short circuit mm -hmm. it, it i it, love it, that movie yeah it 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 it, it, <laughs> it has revealed to no us disassemble. all that we would rather be who we were yesterday I uh, like like we would like to take that person that we were yesterday uh on to the tomorrow of online and say hey uh, here's me because who wants to dissolve into a bunch of nothingness of tomorrow maybe that's that's an uplifting thing about us god damn it harman don't waste your all right well, like like what what time is it did we do a full podcast almost almost let's do a wrap <laughs> i mean <laughs> We'd, I'm not saying let's do a rap, but you know that's it, the time. It, would it be right. tedious and tiresome to like just shout out everybody that came from a long distance away? And like, like yeah, just that's like, what I feel like we great. owe them. Like, like let's yeah. bring yeah, all like, the yahoos. Like, like, like uh, I, I know we, we we got Sarah and Austin. You guys came. Uh, Chico. We got where Salem, Saudi Arabia, for real, and we have we have England here too. Yeah, Australia. Australia. Not, uh, Austria. I heard Chicago. Uh, 
How about all at the same time? <laughs> Portraits. Don't you think there's Everybody some way all, all at the same is time? Is there some way to line people up and just have them sing to a microphone like, I'm from Melbourne, Australia, and uh, raisins are great. Wait, how about this? Yeah, let's do it. Uh, pe- people that came, like, for real, that uh, came from out of, like, way out of town to come to the show. Like, stand up, and maybe we'll just bring you up, and we'll just all say hello to you. Maybe, because... like, line up by the staircase Yeah, by yeah just Jeff. come on up. No, the whole don't come audience. Up. Stand, I'm going to guess the guy with the camera came from England. Jesus Christ. Hey, What's up? That's hey, 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 hey. Hey. All right. Hey, yeah. <laughs> uh, it could have been <laughs> off the stage. <laughs> Rob, up, t- take your mic and interview everybody to, to, to tell them hello. It's the this whole... was your idea, Jeff. You handled this. It's the entire audience. How could this possibly go wrong? I'll come to us. Uh, you, sir, uh, where are you from? I mean, uh, this is good. Oregon. Salem, Oregon. And what's your name? Yeah, you uh, can Nathan have a Jones? seat. Nathan Jones. Nathan Jones, uh, what's your worst fear? Oh, um, I guess uh, having my head cut off but not dying. And so you're just like this embodied head. <laughs> That's a good one. That you, sounds awesome. You couldn't, you couldn't, no, but you couldn't do <laughs> it. Sounds anything. like a terrible way to, you, to uh, die. Yeah. It was, I'm sorry. The correct answer was Panthers. Thank you very much. Good to meet uh, you. That's the where, best where you worst from? fear ever. Colorado. 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 Getting what, cut off, but not Boulder. dying. Well, Denver. Denver, Boulder. Denver, Boulder. You guys can't agree on this. You guys are from different cities. Yes. yes. What's your what, what? What was the worst thing that ever happened to you in Boulder, Colorado? Oh dear Lord, you don't even want to know. We literally asked. <laughs> <laughs> it'll, take, it'll take way too. Just, just, just give us the setting. Like, what, what was the place? Too many tits out. Too many tits out. Let's give them up for Boulder, Colorado, yes. and Milwaukee, and wherever the fuck. You, sir, you're wearing an Arsenal shirt. Sorry about your shitty team. Uh, are, are you from London? Yeah, I am, yeah. Are you? Yeah. yeah, Arsenal's blowing it right now. Nah, it's shit. Yeah, they're fucking rubbish. They got that shitty coach, and everybody's all shit. Uh, uh, <laughs> if you had one wish, what would it be? Oh, suck up, shitty coach. Suck up, shitty coach. All right, is it, I, I think he says English. Thank you very much from Arsenal. Uh, London, where are you from, sir? Uh, Edmonton, Alberta, Canada. I love yes. Edmo. Uh, what, what, uh, what's your favorite bar on White Avenue? Oh, you got to go to the Buckingham. Vegan food. Fuck yeah, I've been there. Yeah, all right. Oh, you're Samson. I met you before. Samson, he's, 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 he's the living reincarnation of Brody Stevens. Let's give him up. Thank you very much. Thank you, brother. Eric. Eric, where are you from? Ibiza, Spain. Spain? Yeah. Ibiza. Nice. Fent- uh, so are you, are you Catalan? Or? Uh, no. No, you, you're Castilla? Also not. I'm German. You're German. <laughs> Get the fuck out of here. Thank you very much. Welcome. Nick. Nick, where are you from, Nick? Bristol, England. Bristol, England. Yeah. That's correct. What makes Bristol special? What, 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 what is the claim to fame of Bristol, England? Uh, it's pirates, I think. Pirates. Yeah. Okay, what's up? What's your what's your name over here? Sorry, you, I've got, I'm just trying. So, like, like, what's your name? Uh, my name's Jibs. I'm from London. Okay, Jibs. and you, you love the Hulk? Yeah, he's a pretty cool guy, I guess. <laughs> ah, like, because he gets mad, right? And then he turns into the Hulk. He does. He does it better than anyone else. Yeah. Oh, you want to get a selfie? All right. Okay. What's well, so your friend of his, or are you just? Uh... Yeah, we, we met today. Okay. Wait, what's your name? Eve. E- e- Eve? Yeah. Okay. It's French. Well, uh, no, that's very, very a bold choice. <laughs> uh, are you a lumberjack? Uh, no, not. Oh, yeah, no, I, I, being racist. But uh, what are you? Uh, a software engineer. Okay, well, it makes sense. Uh, Eve, the software engineer. Oh, sure. Everybody, okay. we, we got a, we got a, uh, a star yeah. over here, Stephen Notley from Edmonton. Oh, Stephen Notley! Seattle. 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 <laughs> Creator Bob the Angry Flower, one of our, one of our favorite comics. Uh, St- uh, Steven, uh, write a haiku for us right now. A haiku is five. Seven, five. A haiku is five syllables and then seven and then five again. Close enough. Let's give it up for Steven Notley. <laughs> okay, well. You, sir. Uh, it's Edmonton, Alberta. Edmonton, Alberta. The correct answer is Empress Ale House. And, okay. Oh, oh, yeah. All right. Okay. Well, I've I don't think. Hey, what's your name? Jesse. Yeah. How do you know when you're finished? All right. Yeah. Okay. That's how you do it. Yeah. Uh, what, yeah. What's your name? Sarah. Where are you from? Colorado Springs. Nice. My Colorado Springs. Is, uh, what's your name? Bill. Bill. Uh, uh, get, put it on my tab. <laughs> what's your name? Riley. Dry, Riley. Uh, Where are you what? from? Yeah. Close enough. Yeah. All right. Uh, more like far enough. What's your What's your name? I'm Robert. 
Hey, what's up? You from Memphis? Yeah, nailed it. What? Yeah, I remember you. Fuck yeah, you're you're a memorable guy. I was just there. Have you been to Sunrise Breakfast? Uh, what's the place in uh, the Midtown? Uh, Sun Studio? It, no, no, uh, near Sun Studios. Sunrise Breakfast Joint. Uh, Never mind. You got to go there. It's fucking great. Uh, <laughs> yeah. There. All right. It's all lies. It's all lies tonight. Where, where, where are you from, sir? Uh, Sydney, Australia. Sydney, Australia. Fair dinkum. Uh, tell Dan if you like his hat or not. I like that hat, mate. <laughs> That's Dominic. Dominic, I met you. I like that hat, mate. This is going great. Everybody, everybody, uh, what, what, what's your name? Phil. Phil McCracken. Good to <laughs> say. All right. Wait, oh. Sorry, my surname's McFadden, and that's what I got called at school. Phil McFadden. <laughs> that, well done. Okay. All right. And, what's your name, Adam? Uh, what's your, what's your name? Lauren. Lauren, where are you from? Oh, San Antonio, Texas. San Antonio, Texas. I'll be there in a few days. Nope. Uh, so, what's the best uh, San, Huevos Rancheras so, in San Antonio? So what's, your, what's the best Huevos Rancheras? <laughs> say it louder. Okay, thank what? you very much. No, it's over there. Uh, okay, all right, all right. Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> I got. I I, 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 I don't no, know. No, go ahead. I, I guess, no, no, it's, no, no. It's, yeah, it's, hey, it's, it's not no, called Davis Town. It's called Harmon Town. Yeah, I don't know. Where, who, who, who are you? I don't uh, know. Juan. Juan, where are you from? This is a great oh. business. Oh, well, yeah. you've done Juan. You've done them all. Get the fuck out of here. What? All right. Where's he from? <laughs> What's your name? San Antonio. San Antonio. Rebecca. What? Wait. Go ahead. It's, it's no, you. no, it's like Rebecca. Look at her belt. Rick and Morty. It's got a bottle opener on. There we go. It's got a bottle opener on. That's, yeah, you're you're like you're like the Batman of alcoholics. That's fantastic. <laughs> what, what, what is your name, sir? Lucas. Lucas, where are you from? Madison, Wisconsin. Madison, Wisconsin. Hey. Uh, how do you like those uh, those uh, Capitol Steps? And what's that weird bar called? The Beaver or something or other? The what? Yeah, there's a bar called the, the Beaver. Badger? The thing I don't know. <laughs> there's a lot of weird bars. I don't know the Beaver one. There's a, yeah, well, that's what she said. All right, get out of here. <laughs> All right, what's your name, sir? Jeremy. Jeremy. Uh, uh, wait, 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 wait. <laughs> Boise, Idaho. Yeah, yeah. He's like the Boise, Dick Cameron of them. <laughs> All right, come on. Keep them moving. All right, we're, we're almost halfway through. What's your name? I'm Will. Where are you from, Will? Minnesota. Minnesota, what part? Uh, uh, St. Anthony. St. Anthony, that's next to... Just north of the Twin Cities. It's next to nothing. Yeah, uh, well, that, well, that, that, can, that can eat well, dicks, according to my next well, friend. Well, if you had... If you had uh, one superpower, one superpower, Will, what would it be? Uh, Jack says... Really I'm to, to wear a t-shirt. Fantastic. Uh, Jack, Good to see you, Will. Jack says that that's fucking bullshit. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All fucking... Right. Shots right. fired. Where are you from? Great. All three of us from Austin, Texas. Austin, Texas. Uh, Fantastic. Austin, Texas. I'm what be you, there. What's your name? Brenton. Brenton. Uh, Austin, Texas could go fuck itself. Turk. Okay. Yeah. I, I got yeah. Carlos, Turk, and John over here. They're from Austin, Texas. Uh, sounds what like up? some bullshit. To Talk me. about a uh, Yellow Jacket Social Club. Oh shit! Don't get started with it. No. <laughs> All, right. All right. Go go go, go get him, Austin. Hook him horns. Well, let's get this guy up here. Come on. What are you What are you talking about? Uh, crumb. Oh hey. Crumb. crumb. Yeah. yeah. Fucking yeah. He's from Crumb. All right. He, yeah. He's Conan's god. What, come what, on, what, come on. Let's keep it moving. What, what, the what, fuck? what are you talking Everybody, about? What, what's your name? I'm talking about whatever, uh, just whatever is being talked about. Man, come on. Yeah. This is Davis from Atlanta, Georgia. I love Davis. Ah, uh, fuck oh, that I guy. Lived in Atlanta for like a year, just last year. Uh, yeah, what's your he favorite? He lived in Atlanta for a year. Is he's done with it? What's your least favorite thing about Dan Herman? Oh, uh, easily, you know, just just his whole aura, you know. If he's <laughs> that guy loves he, my aura. He what hates do you your aura. He hates your aura. Hates oh, your aura. This, this guy you, loves Dan. my aura. Exactly. Yeah. Shots right, fired well, from Atlanta. Call it. Call it even. Okay. All okay. right. <laughs> uh, what do you What do you What do you think about the all show? This? Ended five uh, years ago, by the way. Uh, what well, I think about. I, yeah, JP, I, I, I think we had to we right had now. to do the credits I again. Can, uh, JP from Oswego, Illinois. Uh, sing a song about Oswego. Uh, it's a town. There's a lot of corn in it. <laughs> Close enough. Uh, JP from Oswego. All right, take it, Dan. What, is, is, is it, is hey, it, nobody's from here. Like, right. I got it. I got it. What's, what's your name? Uh, Jazz. Your name is Jazz. 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 Jazz Nate. Jazz Nate. Jazz Nate. That's awesome. Where are you from, Jazz Nate? Sydney, Australia. Sydney, Australia. Right. Uh, is it is Dinkum fair or unfair in Sydney, Australia? I think it's pretty fair. Uh, it's fair, Dinkum. Thank you, uh, Jasmine. Geez, I wonder what Danny from Vancouver would have to say about that. <laughs> Dinkum moderate. 
All right. You. What's your name? All right. We're almost. Ahart. Okay. Ahart? Yeah. Ahart from Milwaukee. Yeah, the hometown. Oh, shit. Yeah. Harley Davidson. Uh, what, what ward are you from? What ward? I don't know. What neighborhood? Third. Third uh, ward? 26 in Chambers. 26 in Chambers. Yeah. Did you ever do Coke at that? What's that weird bar that we went to where they. Uh, Why not, too? What's Libby's, that weird? Libby's. That, that was the Libby's. Uh, Libby's. That place was crazy. Yeah. Ever go to Libby's? Never been to Libby's. Uh, don't go there because you get killed. Okay. All right. Well, also Thank the you. Coke is take it down. Up. All right. Well, uh, what do you? What do you? The show ends in two and a half hours. Everybody. I'm from Memphis. You're from Hintas? Memphis. Memphis. For God's sake, it's music country. I I, I was just there. Yeah. Uh, uh, if if Elvis were here, he would say. Ah shit. Yeah. I, I, <laughs> he'd be like, oh, I got up there. You All right. Screen these answers. We're burning through. All right, and uh, the, uh, the, uh, the, 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 what, you think you could fight that guy? Uh, I'm too peaceful. Really? Yeah, no, <laughs> good, that's side. good. You're on, yeah, that means you're on my side, so if we have to fight him, I'm on What's your side. Uh, Dan, Dan, uh, I'm going gonna, gonna to blow your mind. I got Hadi over here from okay. Saudi motherfucking Arabia. All right. Yeah! Yeah! I just want to say that neurodiversity crosses borders. <laughs> All right? All right, now... How do you say fuck your mama in I I, I fucked your mama in Arabic? <laughs> he actually included the in Arabic part. So you wrote uh, it? All right, how do you say fuck your mama in, uh, I'm guessing, Delaware? Uh, it's Kansas. Where, where Kansas. are you from? Kansas. Uh, yeah. How do you say fuck your mama there? It's fuck your mama. Yeah, okay, all right. What uh, part of Kansas? Where, where in Kansas are you from? Calvin. Kansas. What part of Kansas? Kansas City, so, yeah. Kansas City. Oh yeah, the yeah. Kansas City part. Yeah, the the, the 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 shitty Kansas City. Yeah, well, yeah. don't. Yeah. yeah, it's all shit. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> don't let him. Well, it's, I mean, it's no, I, he knows. It's a, don't be ashamed of yourself. I'm not ashamed. Uh, no, I, 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 don't, don't don't let me tell you what to do. <laughs> I just just What's just 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 yeah, just yeah, like 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 trust me, but also don't. Yeah, I don't know what to tell you. Uh, this is Jacob from Austria, from okay. from Vienna, Austria. Awesome. All awesome. right. Uh, Best schnitzel in Los Angeles is Wiener Schnitzel. Yeah. <laughs> Der Wiener Schnitzel. Yeah. Thank you. All right. I like that that is the correct answer. Where, uh, where like are you him. from? I'm from Hawaii. Hawaii. What, what's the? Where's the best spam in Los Angeles? Everywhere. It's the same. Yeah. Okay. Spam comes to the can. Yeah. What part? Like, what? Wait. 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 Uh, okay. All right. No, sorry. Don't don't let me make oh it. Oh, your line was shorter than mine. Okay. Uh, yeah, they, they, they want hey, the fucking you, money. Are you, are you, are you, where are you from? Washington. Okay. Good. All right. <laughs> <laughs> like that's fine. Or where are you from? I live here, but uh, this is our four-year anniversary, so I had to come say hello. Oh, to hey, you. how are you? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> how are you? I just wanted to let you everybody know. Uh, I cried a lot when I was on stage, and. Uh, this show saved my life along with everybody else, and uh, I'm a much happier, healthier person now, and just let y'all know that, you know, there's brightness out there, too. Also, wait, yeah. hold on. I saw your Instagram story. Tell, tell people your name again. Oh, my name is Hooks. I go by Hooks now. Yeah. Wait, hold I, on. She also kicked the, the dick out of karaoke last night at the drawing room. You fucking bur murdered it. Well done. Yeah, you came up and were vulnerable with us, and we, yeah, I mean, yeah. look, we don't, we don't, we don't claim to be the cure for anything, but. But especially since it's the week of Thanksgiving, just wanted to let you all know, like Thanksgiving gets yeah, better. Yeah, that's when we met you. Is yeah. you were thinking about going home to your family, you, you and it was gave like, me a shirt and um, eighty dollars, and I gave forty dollars to some other dude that apparently was having a baby. But anyway, so yeah. Helping helping people is easy. Thank you. Also. Uh, here's my good buddy Greg Papillon, Gregory Papillon, and uh, he gave me ukulele strings and guitar strings. And this motherfucker is a bad dude. Uh, he's from Ontario, California. Whoa. Oh, really? <laughs> Consider that Saudi Arabia. Greg, uh, Greg, Greg uh, uh, some Harmon Town up in five words or less. Uh, That's one. <laughs> Okay, here we go. Uh, so, okay, thank you very much. Gregory Papio. That's, I couldn't have said it better myself. Is that it? Or, <clears throat> what's your name, madam? Uh, 
Kristen? Kristen, where are you from? Uh, Hamilton, Ontario. Hamilton, the hammer. Oh, no. I've been to the hammer. Why does, I have a question for you. You're, you're from Hamilton, Ontario. Yeah. Why does everybody in Hamilton, Ontario have a limp? I've never seen more gamey legs. Everybody's fucking broken there. <laughs> Everybody in <laughs> Hamilton. That's, a, got that's a, a bold statement. I say uh, hi to Why does everybody in Hamilton hi, got Jesse. a limp? Uh, I wish you could be here. Oh, sorry. Where's Jesse? Uh, he's in Toronto. He's Toronto. Yeah. All right. Well, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll be in Toronto soon. Okay, uh, Steve. Uh, thank you very much. Do, is our audience... Uh, are they autistic? Oh. <laughs> In they're, general. They're awesome. They have autistic traits. A lot of people do. Yeah, um, they all do. But they're awesome. Yeah. yeah. And Keith, uh, everyone is chemical. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. True. And you guys are happy. I, We're, uh, we are. I brought yeah, you yeah, out, we right? We are happy. Yeah. I, I, I honestly, like, I told you guys backstage, like, the, there was no rhyme or reason to it. I, 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 we've been doing this show for the whole decade, and, like, I, like, it was truly, like, a highlight to... Oh, we're... I, 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 I wanted you guys to be here, and I, I really value you being here. Well, thank and I, you. I, I thank hope you, you had a good time. It was uh, great. It was awesome. Absolutely. And thank you guys. Yeah, thank all of you. Yeah. We have one more show left, and this is the ultimate cliffhanger. But, the, but, the, but the, with the last show is going to be the worst show. People are coming sure. up and going, I, could, I tried to get in the last show. I'm like, that's going to be the worst show. going to be the worst. The worst show. Worst yeah, because I, I, I'm just, I'm just going to not even come. Because they're gonna they're gonna they're gonna put chairs on the stage. It's gonna be the worst show. This is worst the show. This that is you the best to show. Be you came to the best one. This is the one. The, the last show is going to be Let's give garbage. it up for Keith and Steve, everybody. Rob Schraub. Spencer Crittenden. Will, Ashlyn, Danny, Josh, Samson, Riley, Austin, Sarah, everybody that came tonight. Church, Zach, Nolan, making everything happen. I'm your comptroller, Jeff Davis, your mayor, Dan Harmon. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Steve Silverman and Keith Carricker, everybody. I really can't tell you how much you guys all mean to us. It, uh, it's sad to see it go, but I'm so happy all you all traveled so far to come see us. Uh, drive fast and take chances. Get any of that? It's a good show!